ancient of days, Alpha, Omega, beginning and the end. Lord, I want to thank you for your power, for your glory. I want to thank you, God, for your mercy. Thank you, God, for commanding this hour. Thank you for every man of God, woman of God, coming, O Lord, unto this holy mountain. Let the heavens over us be open, Jehovah. Send, O God, blessing. Send mercy, grace, O Lord, unto everyone yearning out, O Lord, to receive from you today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, take control, take over. 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 I plead the blood. 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 I plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon this holy mountain. Daddy, let there be a mighty encounter, O Lord. Let there be Jehovah, a manifestation of your glory. Daddy, in this combined service, Lord, let everyone that will come, O God, unto this holy mountain meet with your mercy and grace like never before in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, O Lord God Almighty, because I know what you're set to do. No man can hinder, no power can hinder. Upon this holy mountain, faith clinic and healing atmosphere, this holy mountain, missionary outreach mountain of PPP, praise, preaching, prayer. I reveal your name, Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. I reveal your name, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, Alpha, Omega, beginning and the end. Take your place, O Lord, and do what you alone can do. I honor you, Daddy. Without exalted, without glorified. In Jesus' name I've decreed. Amen. I want to thank God for you. Everyone that is there, woman of God, everyone, man of God, God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Yesterday, I apologies. I don't know the system crashed, and it crashed at the time that the Holy Spirit just told me to carry on today with a combined service. So today we are doing the combined service. We didn't have the time to drink the water yesterday, so we are having a combined service of yesterday and today in this service. And believe me, you. Whenever you see such attack, definitely you know that there is something God wants to achieve through us and in us. So you don't want to, by the grace of God, miss the, any session on this holy mountain today in the name of Jesus Christ. So grab your bottle of water. Please get your bottle of water ready. It's a combined service today. Get your bottle of water ready. Type the word ready and get set for what God is going to do. I'm going to play our anthem. Somebody join me to prophesy peace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Join me to prophesy peace. Hallelujah. Nice to see you. Joe Buchwana. Nice to see you. Julia A. God bless you, woman of God. Julia A. God bless anyone, everyone. Hallelujah. Let's prophesy peace and joy. Grab your bottle of water. It's a combined service. Yesterday's broadcast crashed towards the end. We did not get time to drink the water. So it's a combined service. Join us. Hallelujah. I feel too worried. About the things that I see, I, have my peace. I got my peace, I, have my I got my joy. Even when, Even when people say to me, What is going on? I have my peace, I have my peace. got my joy. I will trust, I will trust in, in the Lord. Lord. The I got my peace. I will wait on the Lord. He will never turn his back on me. I got my peace. My life, my life, and more depends on you, Yahweh. Tomorrow lies in your hands. Thank you, Jesus. My life, my life, Lord, depends on you, Yahweh. Future lies in your hand. Oh, 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 oh. I raise my hands in surrender to you, oh. I feel too worried about the things that I see. Oh, I got my peace. I got my joy. Even when people say to me, What is going on? I have my 
Even when people say to me, Yeli Balo Sukabatali, got my peace, yeah, yeah, got my joy. I will wait on the Lord, He will never let me down. Trust is in the Lord. He will never turn his back on me again. He has got my peace. It's up your voice and say, My life, yeah. My life, my life, Lord. Depends on you, Yahweh. Tomorrow lies in your hands. Oh, I raise my hand. Adonai give me joy, give us joy. Ibali katos kama. Our lives, daddy, daddy, God, depends on you forever, you forever. Tomorrow, tini brana dosa kama. Lies in your hand. Hey, 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 hey. I raise my hand, oh Lord, to you, Yahweh. My life, my life, my life, Lord, depends on you, Yahweh. Tomorrow lies in your hand. I raise, oh Lord, I raise my hand. I don't lie to you, Yahweh. Give me joy. Worship the Lord with me. I got my peace, I got my joy. Even when people take a cano santani, Ibra le dali kozia, ora mama manga dala de katelo, ye bakato sukaiba. I will wait on the Lord, He will never turn His back on me. Oh 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 oh. Masha katala boksi kaba. Endele keteli. Manzo kaliba ebrade. Manga da yeba la toso kaba. Yela ba o talikozi. Ibra la gayanda li kateli. Maga gaga baron toso kaba. My life, oh Lord God, depends on you. Depends on you, Yahweh. Tomorrow lies in your hands. My life, my life, my life, oh, oh, depends on you, Yahweh. Because I know tomorrow lies in your hand. I raise, I raise my hand, oh, Lord, to you, Yahweh. Lord, and I give me joy. Oh, 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 Give me your peace, oh Lord, Adonai. Give me your joy, Papa Libra, e katalabo. Ora gavandeli, zali vantali, o paralada li katali. Give me e e e, lebrake na libra toso kaba. Give me your peace, oh Lord God. Give me your joy, ye le le e e e. Give me your peace, oh oh oh. Give me your joy, daddy. Give me your joy, everybody. Give me a pretty little brown sicaba through the blood, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Take over, take control of this mountain, and don't I? Yeah, give me your joy. Okay, yesterday we started a session that the Holy Spirit gave to us. And that session, nothing can hinder what God intends to do 
through you, through me. I see heaven making a way for somebody. I see heaven fighting through. So today is a combined service. And I apologize for the system fluctuation that we experienced yesterday. A little bit beyond what I, I, I could handle. But I thank God that at least the Lord made it such that we're able to have a combined service today. So wherever you may be, man of God, woman of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you may be, join me as you start to plead the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. The blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. Join me wherever you may be. Plead the blood, plead the blood, plead the blood. Plead the blood, plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Very quickly, plead the blood, plead the blood. Manga, gaga, gaga. teli bantalimo. When the Lord is ready to lift up a nation, believe me you, it does not matter how many obstacles are before that nation or nations. Once God is ready for your lifting up and for my lifting up, nothing can hinder it. Daddy, we plead the blood, we plead the blood, join me as we plead the blood. We plead the blood in the name of Jesus Christ. We plead the blood, we plead the blood, we plead the blood, we plead the blood, we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood, we plead the blood. Something is happening in the spirit realm, whether the enemy is comfortable with it or not. We plead the precious blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus Christ. We plead the precious blood of Jesus. Risha kato sake, libra kete limo, o la gagaga, baron zokayadala, mandala gaba. Matoso Zoka Badali e Kadeli Mikraile Bantali Mosukaba Uraga Baba Mantoro Balianga Dali. I soak every man, every woman, I soak every man, every woman with the power and the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Anyone, everyone, under the sound of my voice, I soak with the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. Rashantali Bo Sikaba Nege Deli Bantalimo O Zagagagaga plead the blood plead the blood plead the precious blood of the Lamb in the name of Jesus Ma Shake Liba Ebra Ketelimoso O Zandaragadalibos O Zandaragadalibos O Zandaragadalibos O Zake Telimosika E Bale Mandaraga Debro Zikaya Bantali Holy Ghost Fire Power Holy Ghost Power Fire Holy Ghost take preeminence take control Kara Dalagadayagaba Mash in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you may be, somebody in Jesus' name, put in prayer. Please put in prayer, prayer. Please put in prayer, prayer, prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Karadalios. Karadalios. Shetali Mosikaba. Bible made us to know that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but mighty through God. Today, in Jesus' name, somebody join faith and say, Lord, through you we will overcome. Through your mercy, through your grace, we will overcome. Through your mercy, through your grace, through your grace, through your mercy, through your power, through your grace, through your mercy, we will overcome. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, through your mercy, through your grace, through your grace, through your mercy. Somebody join me. Shalaga Bali Mantoso Oragababa Libra Catalios O Zake Telimosikaba Holy Ghost take control take over Holy Ghost take over take control I soak you I soak you I soak you Julia A with the power of the blood of Jesus Christ I soak you Prince Miracle Chibwezi I soak you with the power of the blood of Jesus Christ I soak you Marsha Wilson with the power of the precious blood of Jesus Christ Everything God has emerged for this service nothing can stop it in the name of Jesus Christ Second Corinthians chapter Second Corinthians chapter four verse seventeen Second Corinthians chapter four verse seventeen. Second Corinthians chapter four verse seventeen. Na lagada lagaba. Second Corinthians chapter four verse seventeen. Man telibos o ragaba e bali katali. Rashan talimosi kaye libra gadalibos o ragaba baba lado sukaba. Somebody join me and say bitter cry is over. I want us to just confess this as the Holy Spirit is leading us. Let's confess it nine times. Bitter cry over. Bitter cry is over. Bitter cry is over. Bitter cry is over. In the name of Jesus Christ, for you, for me, for our household, for anyone you represent, bitter cry is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. Him that the Lord has set free is free indeed. Him that the Lord has set free is free indeed. Bitter cry is over. Bitter cry is over. Is over. Bitter cry is over in the name of Jesus Christ. Bitter cry is over. Laga yada laga ba masha kaba de ba koso. O santere ba li katali. Mandrali e kaladoso. O sabake te li man katali. Me kre ba le kaya dalimo. Me kre ba li kaya dalimo. Me kre ba li kaya 
Adalimo, O Saliba Catalimo Sikaba, Babrati, I soak you Babrati with the power of the precious blood of Jesus Christ, Rikandali Ebratoso, Rikandali Ebratoso, O Sandali Catalio Zikayaba, O Sandali Catalio Zikayaba, O Rabababa, E Parendali Catelli, E Parendali Catelli, Manteli Brocosicaba, Manteli Brocosica Batali, O Zandeli Cayandali, O Sandeli Cayandali, Maga Gagagaga, Ragagagagaga, Ruba Catalaba, Mateli Bari Catali, Mitari Bantali Mosso, O Zake Paradosi, Jebrekeli Bacatali Mosicaba, Endale Ebali Cantoso, O Sabacalio Zacayandali, O Sacatalimo Ubali Cayanda, Ebra, Second Corinthians chapter four, Second Corinthians chapter four, verse seventeen, somebody, Second Corinthians chapter four, seventeen, in the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost, take control, take over, Holy Ghost, take over, take control, in the name of Jesus Christ, the power of God is here, the mercy of God is here. Today is a day of prayer, no doubt, but we are going to also drink the water since the, yesterday's service was interrupted by, by network failure. Okay, so by network failure, it was interrupted, and I apologize for those who expected us to take the water yesterday, but I believe and I thank God that God has made a way for us today to make up for that which were, was meant to be yesterday. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17, our light affliction, who is that person under the sound of my voice that is afflicted today? Who is like that man in John chapter 5 verse 3 to, to 9, verse 3 to 9, the man that was lame, this man was in affliction for 38 years. How long has that affliction been? Bitter cry is over for you. In one second, Jesus took away the bitter cry for this man. I see God taking away the bitter cry for you in a second. I see God wiping away your tears in a second. That light affliction today, God wants to correct it. It's a combined service and the power of God is here mightily. It's a combined service and God wants to use your hands to lift up, to raise up the dead, to raise up the dead, to heal the sick. God wants to use your mortal mouth to prophesy and it will come to pass. Who is that person under the sound of my voice undergoing any form of light affliction? The Lord Negaya Dalagaba Ma Rosso Toka Ebali Manga Dalagaba. Heaven is here to deliver you. Somebody join me and say, Heaven is here to deliver me. Heaven is here to deliver my household. Heaven is here to deliver my family. Heaven is here to deliver my loved ones. I see the power of God, the mercy of God. I see the power of God, the mercy of God. Heaven is here to deliver you. Manga Dalaga Misha Ebali Kata Rekele Bantalimoso Oragababa Libra. That top that God has intended for you, nothing can stop you from getting to that top. In Jesus' name, nothing. That top that is meant for you, nothing can stop you from getting to that top. That light affliction, Bible says, but, but, but is for a moment. Hallelujah. It says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Is but for a moment. How come the man's man's affliction was for 38 years? So does it mean that 38 years can count sometimes in the spirit realm as a moment? Yes, because in the eyes of God, a thousand years is like a second. A second is like a thousand years. Yes, it's possible that yes, 38 years can count like for a moment. Look at the scripture with me, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. The, he said, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. But this month was for 38 years. So is 38 years but for a moment? Yes. It's, it can be for a moment. But this is one thing. Just like Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says that all things work together for good. Here also in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17. Here also in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17. Exactly like Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says all things work together for good. This one says, work it for us a far more. Work it for us. Somebody join me and say that the bitter cry is over it starts to work for me the bitter cry is over it starts to work for me the affliction is over it starts to work for me the lack of job is over it starts to work for me the lack of good you know good good you know car stops and starts to work for me hallelujah lack of good 
experience in marriage stops for me and start to work for me. Hallelujah. That affliction starts to work for you and work for me. Somebody join me and say the affliction starts to work for me. That's what scripture says. It starts to work for me. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says the same thing. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them who are called according to his purpose. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 also say work it for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Whatever brought bitter tears to your eyes, whatever has brought bitter tears to the eyes of your family members, whatever has brought bitter tears to your home, to your community, this minute, by the power of the Most High God, by the divine power in Jesus' name, start to work for your good. It takes you to the top. It starts to take you to the top. It works for your good in the name of Jesus Christ. It becomes a laborer. It becomes a slave working for you. That's what the scripture says. It worked for us and it must work for you. It worked for us. It must work for you. The situation of that man worked for him because it brought him in confrontation with the Lord Jesus Christ. It worked for him. The woman with the issue of blood, her circumstance worked for her because it brought her before the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody under the sound of my voice, what is that situation that you're going through? What is that circumstance that you're going through? It starts to work for you. Bitter tears, bitter tears, bitter cry is over. Bitter cry is over in the name of Jesus Christ. Bitter cry is over. Bitter cry is over. It starts to work for you you eternal weight of glory exceeding an eternal weight for, of glory it starts to work for you more far more exceeding far more ex beyond what you can comprehend called beyond what you can comprehend a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory in the name of Jesus Christ that business that that has brought so much affliction that affliction in that business starts to work for you it starts to work for you a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. Somebody prophesy a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. A far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. It works for you. It works for your family. It works for you. It works for your son. A far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Man, dale gada yagaba ragaba badu sakete indrele keteli barantaliyo ibaro sukaya jaketeli ibaro sukaya bazaketeli. O raga ba 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 raga dalaga ba be chele ba ntali bo o zake. Second Corinthians chapter four verse eighteen. Somebody is trying to prophesy again. Uh, the prophecy we are just finishing is from Rome. Is from Romans chapter eight verse twenty eight and Second Corinthians chapter four verse seventeen. That that affliction, that circumstance, that thing that has caused that bitter cry, it starts to work for you. It starts to work for you. It starts to favor you. It starts to work for you. It starts to work. For, it starts to live labor for your upliftment. It starts to labor for your upliftment because man, the scripture says so. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18. Are you with me, man of God? Are you with me? Are you with me, woman of God? Are you with me? 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18. There's something interesting about 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 and that is you will see. Somebody say, I will see. I just prophesied with what God has given to us. See you, see you at the top. See you at the top. There is something about Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18. It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Why? For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, eternal. Somebody you will see in the name of Jesus Christ with the eye of the Spirit. You will see those eternal purposes of God. Forget about those temporary things that have not taken place yet. Forget about those temporary things that have not taken place yet. You will see with the eyes of the Spirit. You will see. You will see with the eyes of the Spirit. Somebody join me and say, Oh Lord, open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to see. Somebody join me and say, Lord, open my eyes to see. We do not gaze at things that are temporal things that are seen only temporarily but we are gazing our face on things which are 
of eternal value which cannot be seen but have eternal value in the name of Jesus Christ. Magadalagaba Zegedeli Gadalibro Uragababa Tosikaba. If you come with me to the chapter before this chapter, that is the previous one, that is Second Corinthians chapter three, Second Corinthians chapter three, verse sixteen. Nevertheless, it shall turn to the Lord, and when it turns to the Lord, this will happen. He said, "The veil shall be taken away." The veil, the veil, the veil. Somebody, the veil for you to see what God has in plan above what is prevailing around you. The veil must be taken away. Somebody join me and say, "Oh Lord, take away the veil. Take away the veil from my son. Take away. Take away the veil from my life. Take away. Take away the veil from my family. Take away. Take away the veil in the name of Jesus Christ and help us to catalambano. Help us to see. Take away the veil. Libra la gaya dalagaba. Take away the veil. Man ka 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 ka. Take away the veil. Take away the veil. Take away the veil in the name of Jesus. Take away the veil. Libra kon zikatali. O rabantoso kaya O zagade balikateli. Ibajali ebantali mosikaba. Oh Lord, take away the veil in the name of Jesus Christ. Who is that person struggling with the business? That veil that is making you struggle struggle with the business. The Lord take away that veil from you. The Lord take away the veil. The Lord take away the veil. The Lord take away the veil in Jesus' name that is making you struggle in business. Who is that person struggling? Struggling with your studies. That veil is taken away in Jesus' name. You will see and you will see. You will see things of eternal value. You will see things according to what God wants you to see. In the name of Jesus Christ, the veil is taken away. The veil is taken away. Somebody join me. Oh Lord, take away this veil. Laya dalagaya dalagaba. Mashantali bake keli brantoso. Oh rabake ebali katalio. Oh Lord, take away this veil to the glory and honor of your name. Take away this veil. Oh Lord, take away this veil, Likayanda, Mashakeba, Ebrake Telimo, Zokaba and Tali, O Lagagagaga. Oh Lord, take away the veil, Ladi, take away the veil. Oh Lord, take away the veil, Jehovah, take away the veil. Mashake Teli Brakatalio, Mashake Teli Brakatalio, Mashake Teli Brakatalio. Oh Lord, take away the veil, take away the veil to the glory and honor of your name, take away the veil. Rabababa, Ratalimosi, Idrele Kandalio, Mokaba Tosukaba, Jegede Ba. Leo Saki, Zebede Lianga Dalios, Zebede Lianga Dalimoso Caba, Upare la Dosi, De Calienda Licatali, De Calienda Licatali Barosa, Ozake Telimosi Caba, take away the veil in Jesus' name, take away the veil. For the power of God is here for anyone that calls upon the name of the Lord to experience, to experience. The power of God is here for you to experience. Take away the veil, Jehovah, take away. Take away the veil, Legaya Dalagaba. Take away the veil of setback, the veil of affliction, the veil of pain, the veil of shame. In the name of Jesus Christ, call upon the Lord, man of God, call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord in Dali Katoso. Tralia Gadali Mosica, O Rabake Baratalio, O Zantere Bali Catalio, who pare Catali Mosi, Iragagagagaga. Enough is enough. Somebody join me, confess enough is enough. Enough is enough. The voil must be taken away. The veil must be taken away. Enough is enough. God punish the devil. Punish, punish, punish. Enough is enough. Ma kaba rupatoso. Zo kabateli e kalibatali. Enough is enough. God punish the devil. Punish, punish, punish. Enough is enough. Ma shantali kali bratoso ma shantali kali bratoso o ragaba enough is enough in the name of jesus christ bible says and i quote the next verse very quickly it said the lord is the spirit where the spirit of the lord is there's liberty you see why we say holy spirit take control take over where the spirit of the lord is there's liberty somebody hand over everything to the holy spirit holy spirit take control holy spirit take over take control holy spirit take over take control mangara lagaba holy spirit take control take over holy spirit take over take control Somebody in the name of Jesus Christ, when the Spirit of the Lord is there, you will see eternal things. You will see things not just for today, things that will have eternal value. When the Spirit of God is there, everyone is able to catalambano. Everyone is able to koinonia. Everyone is able to perceive. Everyone is able to conceive. Everyone is able to see 
in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord open your eyes to see la de katoso libra la kanda libra tali. The Lord open your eyes to see in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost power fire, fire power, Holy Ghost fire power, power fire. May the Lord open our eyes to see and behold. May the Lord open our eyes to see and behold and behold and see the glory of God, the power of God, the power of God, the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Where the Spirit of the Lord is the liberty. Liberty to what? Liberty to fulfill purpose. Liberty to what? Liberty to fulfill purpose. Liberty to do the will of God. Liberty to fulfill purpose. Liberty to do the will of God. Uma, ga, 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 ga. Somebody receive liberty. You that you are afflicted, Jesus came and gave the man in John chapter 5 liberty. Receive liberty. You that you're struggling in business, Jesus came for you to have liberty. Receive liberty. Receive liberty for that business right now. Receive liberty. In the name of Jesus Christ. The next verse also in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. The next verse. It says, but we all with an open eye beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. Somebody in the name of Jesus Christ, as you step out from this mountain, you will start to see, see you on, see you at the top, see you at the top. You will start to behold the glory of God. Concerning your son, you behold the glory of God. Concerning your daughter, you behold the glory of God. Concerning your spouse, you behold the glory of God. Concerning your business, you behold the glory of God. Somebody under the sound of my voice, from this minute in Jesus' name, the grace to behold, the grace to behold, the grace to see, the grace to see, the grace to see not with an ordinary eye, the grace to see with the eye of the Spirit, because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, that you may behold that you may see, that you may behold, that you may see, the grace to behold, the Lord grant unto you, the grace to behold, the Lord grant unto you, the grace to behold, la gayada la gaba, ma shanta, ribali kate, ebra gebantali musikaba, the grace to behold clearly, in the name of Jesus Christ, may you behold the glory of the Lord, the glory of God, the power of God, the power of God, the glory of God, may you behold, man of God, may you, may you behold, woman of God, may you behold, behold the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Ma ga 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 ga. Shantari ba kete li libroso. O zaga de bali katali. O ngaye batali mosikaba. May you behold. May you behold the glory of God. May you behold. May you behold the power of God. May you behold. In the name of Jesus Christ. My God. Ma shantari katali. Ibra le kadali mo. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 10, I mean to say. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Manga dalagaba. Nikatalibo zikaba. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Masa katosukaba. He brale cantalio. Horaga bababa. He zake telimosikaba. Everything that have been fomented against you. Everything that have been fomented against your family. Everything that have been fomented against the purpose and plan of God for you and your household. Everything that have been taken to an evil altar. That have been taken to an evil altar as we pray this morning minute. May the power of God overturn anything and everything taken to any form of evil altar. Reason being 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. Every evil altar speaking against God's purpose in your life. Every evil altar speaking against God's purpose in the life of your household members, in the, in the life of your loved ones. Every evil altar that is speaking anything against the church, that is speaking against the liberty God has granted you through the Holy Spirit. Anything speaking against the liberty that has been granted you through the Holy Spirit. Anything working against it, Holy Ghost fire scatter. Holy Ghost fire destroy. In the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost fire scatter. Holy Ghost fire destroy. Why are we saying Holy Ghost fire scatter destroy? Second Corinthians chapter ten verse four. He said, "For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. So it's not physical warfare. It's not physical battles. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but mighty through God. But mighty through God. But mighty through God." But mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold, 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 to the pulling down of stronghold. Some strongholds can be negative prophecy, evil prophecies. And some people believe that negative prophecy, not knowing that it's a negative prophecy. Some people have been given a time that they are they, they are going to they are going to die or lose a loved one. It's always every time such people prophesy, they always prophesy negativity, they prophesy evil, they prophesy setback. There is a family that was told that people will continue to die in that family. Those are the kind of yoke that God can help you and I to pull down. 
Of course, the person who say that somebody will keep dying in that family, they'll keep burying people until they are tired. Of course, they didn't say it ordinarily. There must have been one or two things that must have been done in the secret for them to be bold enough to say you will bury and bury and bury yourselves until you are tired. But thank God for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for the Holy Spirit that pulled down the strongholds. Somebody join me in the name of Jesus Christ. Any and every stronghold, known and unknown, seen and unseen, any and every stronghold, may the power of the Holy Spirit pull down. May the power of the Holy Spirit pull it down. Any stronghold, every stronghold, known and unknown in Jesus' name. Any stronghold, every stronghold, we pull down in Jesus' name, we pull it down. We pull down any and every stronghold in Jesus' name, we pull down. Any and every, every and any, any and every stronghold we pull down. Somebody join me. Any and every stronghold we pull down. And yesterday we were mentioning that stronghold. I'm sure one of the things that annoyed the powers of darkness. Psalms chapter 30 verse 3. We're pulling down strongholds of grave. <coughs> We're pulling down the strongholds of grave. Excuse me. We're pulling down the strongholds of grave. Grave. Any form of strongholds of grave. We're pulling it down now. We're pulling it down now. We're pulling it down. The stronghold of the pit. That person prophesied and meant it. He said, you bury yourself and bury and bury in that family. It's a life. Who says that and it comes to power when God has not commanded? Not where the Spirit of the Lord is. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is liberty. There is freedom. There is healing. There is freedom. The season of kill, kill, kill is over. It's now the season of heal, heal, heal. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It said a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. The time to kill, kill, kill is over. It's time to heal. The time to break down, break down, break down is over. It's a time to build up. And so every stronghold, that is why our prayer is mighty through God to pull down stronghold. Stronghold of what? Stronghold of the things that want to kill, kill, kill. Strongholds of things that wants to kill, kill, kill. The power of God is here to pull it down as we pray through the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of kill, kill, kill is over. Is gone, is over. The power of break down, break down, break down. Every time break down, break down, break down. The power of break down is over. If you are just joining us, we welcome you to this warfare prayer. We are praying only that everything in the name of Jesus Christ, everything generating Psalms chapter 30, verse 3, any form of the power of grave or the power of the pit or Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 3. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 3. So, two places we are using to pray Psalms chapter 30, verse 3. Psalms 30 verse 3 and Ecclesiastes 3 verse 3. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 3. We are summoning up the power of God to pull down the strongholds of what? Kill, kill, kill. The stronghold of grave or the pit. We are asking the power of God to break down and to destroy every spirit of breakdown, breakdown, breakdown. Organ breakdown, kidney breakdown, heart failure, and all those kind of things. We are praying, oh Lord, any breakdown, breakdown, breakdown. Breakdown in the body, breakdown. Break down in the system of the body breakdown breakdown in the human anatomy breakdown of any kind of any type holy ghost take control take over we cancel any form of we cancel any form and every form of breakdown in the name of jesus christ any form of every form of breakdown breakdown in the name of jesus christ in the name of Jesus Christ, we destroy by the power of the Holy Spirit. Somebody, you have to focus at this point in time and call upon the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. There was one prayer we prayed, a dangerous prayer in Psalms chapter 18 verse 32. Psalms chapter 18 verse 32. Somebody join me. Psalms chapter 18 verse 32. Because God wants to give somebody strength. 
God wants to give somebody an unusual strength. God wants to give you strength that everybody will be wondering where it came from. Psalms chapter 18 verse 32. Unusual strength, unusual strength. Unusual strength, unusual strength. And this strength is from God, not man. This strength is going to be from God and not man. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is about to give you strength. He's, he's about to give you strength. Is about to give you strength. The same strength talked about in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 is the same strength. It says, my, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. So that's the strength we are talking about. But let's look at Psalms chapter 18, verse 32 first. It says, it is God that girded me with strength. He girded me with strength and make it my way perfect. It is God that is strapping me with strength. It's the one that is wiring my system with strength. So, if you see somebody that is able to enjoy divine healing, if you see somebody that goes out in peace and come back in peace, if you see somebody whose business is expanding and thriving, if you see somebody whose family are together and they are growing and they're trusting God and knowing God, God is the one wiring that strength strength in and through everyone. God is the one wiring that strength in and through everyone. He is the one doing it, not man. He is the one doing it, not the wisdom of anybody. The presence of God is here to wire in you and in me to wire in us that strength, that grace, that strength, that grace. The power of God is here, the mercy of God is here, the glory of God is here. And is ready to wire in us that grace, that strength, that grace, that strength that is needed. Yes, it's God that is supplying that strength, that is giving that strength. Somebody under the sound of my voice receives strength strength. Receive strength to arise from where you have found yourself. Receive strength to expand from where you have found yourself. Receive strength to increase. Receive strength to become who God wants you to be. Receive strength to fulfill your, your, your eternal purpose. Receive strength to finish, fulfill your eternal purpose or to manifest the expected end. There is an expected end from Christ. There is an expected end from God Almighty. Receive grace, receive strength. Receive strength, receive grace. It's the same thing that you have here, that you have also in Isaiah 45 verse 5. It's the same thing you have in this Psalms chapter 18 verse 32. You have exactly the same in Isaiah 45 verse 5. Isaiah 45 verse 5. Somebody God wants to supply you with strength. God wants to supply your son with strength. God wants to supply your folks with strength. God wants to supply your community, your nation with strength. In the name of Jesus Christ. The same thing here in Psalms 18 verse 32. That the Lord girded us with strength. Is the same thing that you have in Isaiah 45 verse 5. Isaiah 45 verse 5. I am the Lord. Isaiah 45 verse 5. I am the Lord. There is none else. I am the Lord. There is, there is none else. There is no God besides me he declares there is no god beside me i guided thee though thou hast not known me i guided thee though thou hast not known me i'm the one supplying i'm the one strengthening i'm the one making you who you are i'm the one making you into whom you ought to be even though you have not known me even though you are not crediting me even though you're not giving me the credit even though you're not focusing on me i am the secret of your success i am the one behind your increase i am the one behind your expansion that's what god is saying, oh Lord, continue to be my secret. Oh Lord, be the secret of my household members. Oh Lord, be the secret of my family in the name of Jesus Christ. So the same scripture you'll find again in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. The same scripture, the same understanding you find in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. So three scriptures point to the fact that strength comes from God. Somebody receives strength in the name of Jesus Christ. I show you this third one and then we start to prophesy strength into any and every area of our life. In into all the organs, into all the organs, into your system, into your business, into your family, in the name of Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9, it says, and I quote, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength, my, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect, my strength is made perfect, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So these three scriptures shows that the strength you start to use from today, that's why when we looked at Second Corinthians chapter four, verse Second Corinthians chapter chapter ten, verse four, Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse four, it says that uh, the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal but mighty through God 
through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Through God is the strength he will give to you. I'm explaining that word through God. It's mighty through God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse Chapter 10, verse 4. Sorry, I mix it sometimes. So that's why I'm making sure that I'm saying the right thing. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. We read it earlier on before reading all this source of strength. Because I've just read three source of strength pointing to God. Okay? But 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 made it clear. It says that we, we, um, we the weapon of our warfare, they are not carnal. You understand? But they are mighty through God to the pulling down. To the pulling down of stronghold, you believe that to pull down the stronghold, it takes strength. To the pulling down of stronghold. Now, that pulling down of stronghold that takes strength, that strength is from God. That's why we went to Psalm chapter 18, verse 32. Psalm chapter 18, verse 32. It said, I gathered thee and give thee strength. So Psalm 18, verse 32 says, I gathered thee and give thee and supply thee strength. Then we came to Isaiah 45, verse 5. Isaiah 45, verse 5. The Lord introduced himself. I am God. There is none besides me. I am the one that guided thee even though you did not know me. Even if you don't know that I'm the one, but I'm the one. I'm the one waking you up every morning. I'm the one that takes you out in peace. I'm the one that brings you back in peace. I'm the one making sure that all your organs are functioning. I'm the one making you to coordinate the speech. I'm the one making you to coordinate the speech. Recognize color. Recognize your family member. I'm the one. I'm that secret strength. And that's what we're looking at again in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. Where it says, my grace is sufficient for you somebody why are you worrying yourself when God says my grace is sufficient for you why don't you lean on the grace of God if you want to look at the problems of this world they can be overwhelming look at it through the eyes of God look at it don't look at it through goggles don't use Google to look at it don't use microscope to look at it don't use binoculars to look at it look at it with the eyes of God look at your circumstance with the eyes of God that's where you see the strength he has provided the weapons of your warfare, the weapons you're using to exist in this world, they are not your physical eyes. They are not carnal. They are not your physical hands. They are not carnal. They are my, this hand is mighty through God. This eye is mighty through God. Don't see the physical, see the spiritual. We are not looking at things that are temporal. We read already in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. Chapter 4, verse 18. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18. We are not looking at things that are temporal, but we are looking at things that are eternal. For the temporal things will come and go. But the eternal things will stay forever. But then for you to be able to catalambano with your eyes, the eternal thing, you need the strength of God. You need the strength of God to see it. Why are you bothering yourself? You are bothered over one hour over things that are happening around you. Just see that thing with the eyes of the Spirit. What do I mean by see that thing with the eye of the Spirit? Once you see that thing with the eye of the Spirit, it starts to work for you. Do you understand? It starts to work for you. It starts to work for you. Once you see with the eyes of the Spirit, it worked for you a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17. That affliction that you're looking at, don't look at it with the physical eye. If you look at it with the physical eye, boom, somebody will fail. But look at it with the eye, that same eye, but with the power of God. With the strength of God in your eye, look at it. If you're touching anything, don't touch with this physical hand. There will not be change. But with the strength of God in your hand, touch that thing. When you are laying hands on people, of course, it's not physical hand that will heal them. It is because we believe the grace of God is on that hand, then we lay hands so that there's transmission of power. Somebody, I want you in this service, as the Lord is telling us, focus on the strength of God through your system. Focus on the strength of God through your hand. Focus on the strength of God through your hand. Focus on the strength of God through your eyes. Focus on the strength of God through your mouth as you speak. Focus on that strength. That's what will bring bitter cry to an end. Bitter cry is over. And this is how it's going to be over. When you see with the eyes of the Spirit. When you touch with the hand of the Spirit. When you speak the words of the Spirit. When you speak what God has placed in your heart. Lashantakabosa, 
Batali. Put in prayer, put in prayer, prayer. God punish the devil, punish, punish, punish. Ricateli Ebrala Catalios. Ricateli Ebra Catalios. Osaka Libra Talimosikaba. What are you trusting God for, man of God? What are you trusting God for, woman of God? The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. Every time you lean on this carnal human strength, it will always amount to an embarrassment. But when you, through God, when you through God handle things physically, when you through God mortify the deeds of the body, when you through God mortify the deeds of the body, Romans chapter 8 verse 11, Romans chapter 8 verse 11, it says that if he that raised up Christ dwells in your mortal body, it will quicken your mortal body, it will quicken, it will energize, it will facilitate the purpose and plans of God. So every time you want to do something, don't do it by the carnal strength, do it through the strength of God. See these scriptures. Look, if you see the scripture we are using to pray, you know why we are praying the way we are praying. Those who are spiritual, they can sense something in the spiritual. We started with 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. The word affliction. What makes people to cry bitter cry? What brings bitter cry into people's life? Is it not affliction? Directly or indirectly? Affliction, physically or spiritually? That is what brings tears. That's what brings setback. That's what brings problems. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 made us to know that that affliction is for a moment. But for sometimes that a moment can look so long in the eyes of some people. I gave example of John chapter 5 from verse 3 to 9. The affliction of that man is for a moment. That is what 2 Corinthians 4 verse 17 is saying. But in that man's life, physically, he has been in that thing for 38 years. So some people, a moment can be 38 years. Some people, a moment like our father Abraham was 25. Some people, a moment can be, it can be just a year or two. Just I'm using typical biblical examples. This man's a moment of affliction, 38 years since he was born, he's been on the, on the bed, permanently there. But Bible says it's for a moment. However, Bible says that that affliction worked for us. And we said somebody should prophesy. Any affliction that have brought tears to your eyes, that have brought tears to your children, your family, may it work for your good. May it start to work for you a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. May it work for you. May it work for you. May it start to work for you. May it become a worker working for you. May it become your slave working for you. The same affliction that came to humble you. The same affliction that came to destroy you. Let him become a slave and start to work for you. Just like the affliction that was afflicting Mephibosheth in the book of Second Kings. Okay, Mephibosheth was afflicted by who? Mephibosheth was afflicted by the servant of his father. Ziba and his 15 sons. But you see, at the appointed time, the Lord reminded David his promise to Jonathan. And David decided to pay that promise. And as a result of that, what was afflicting Mephibosheth started to work for Mephibosheth. Because David gave a decree and said that from that day henceforth, that Mephibosheth was going to be at the top. Mephibosheth was going to be at the top. David said that Mephibosheth will start to sit on the tables of the kings and start to dine with the, with the king and the, ch the children of the king. The level of Mephibosheth changed. And then David added also and said that Ziba, the affliction that was in the life of Mephibosheth, Ziba and his 15 sons, they were commanded to slave for him. They were commanded to work and bring to 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 Mephibosheth on the king's table. You will see this account in 2 Kings chapter 9 from verse what? You see it from verse 9. You see it from verse 9 all the way down to be precise. Hallelujah. The sons, Ziba and his son started to, the same affliction in their life. But you see, Bible did not let us know how long this affliction was. But 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 says for a moment. But come and ask Mephibosheth. Was it for a moment? He counted years. It was years. Are you on this mountain? That affliction has started to become years. But in the eyes of God, it is for a moment. But the word of God will not be broken. Because in that same verse, it says, It worked for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. That affliction works for you. 
let us start to prophesy that the affliction I'm going through right now must work for me. It worked for Mephibosheth. Although people thought that Mephibosheth would die in that circumstance, Mephibosheth happened to be an handicap. Mephibosheth happened to be a disabled. Mephibosheth does not have legs to walk. So his case was very pathetic. It was clear that, that Mephibosheth was going to die in that circumstance. Who is that person under the sound of my voice? Is it very clear that you are going to die in that circumstance? You are crying and somebody says, you better learn to cry more because I don't see any way you're going to escape. I don't see a way out for you. That person is wrong because God is your strength. That's one thing that person did not know. God is your strength. And when God is ready to set you free, he will set you free without even somebody lifting up a finger. He will set you free without your permission. He will set you free before you know it. Mephibosheth did not know that God has started. In fact, when Mephibosheth was invited, Mephibosheth was scared that he was going to be killed. I want you to know, somebody, you are going to receive divine invitation. There's going to be an invitation for you very soon. And that invitation will change your level. That invitation will take you to the top. Somebody confess with me, see you at the top. If somebody have told Mephibosheth, they say, confess, see you at the top. Mephibosheth will say, me. In fact, when Mephibosheth was brought to David, David said that, what am I to do so a dog like me? He was shaking on the floor and said, my master David, what what am I what is to do with me? A dog like me. He called himself a dog. And David said, No, 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 no. From today you become the son of a king. Who is that person calling himself a dog under the sound of my voice? Your circumcise describe you as a dog. It's a lie. You're not a dog. You are a royal priesthood. Second Peter chapter 9. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. I mean to say. First Peter 2, verse 9. You are a royal priesthood. You are not a dog. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That's whom you are. And the Lord has called you in the name of Jesus Christ out of darkness into his marvelous light. He has called you in the name of Jesus Christ out of darkness into his marvelous light. Somebody say in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody join me. Say I am. I am who God say I am. The strength of God is going to change your level in the name of Jesus Christ. Baragadalagaba. Imdreleketele. Izaketele mosikaba. O ragababa. Rashan talibo. O sale ebrale katali. O sale ebrale katali. O ngaye bakatali moso. O zabaga Gadalagaba, O Zagaba Gadalagaba, O Zagaba Gadalagaba, Zege de Balion Zikatali, Zege de Balion Zikabatali, Zege de Balion Zikabatali, O Randelicatoso, O Ragaban Dalimosikaba, Holy Ghost take control take over. Who is that person under the sound of my voice? You have described yourself as a dog, but you can never be a dog. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, you are. Are going to be a child of a king. You are going to eat with the kings. You are going to eat on the table all the days of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Ma shantali kartoso o ragaba. Let me read something to somebody under the sound of my voice, please, if you permit me. Okay, let's read this for reference purpose. For reference purpose, I need to read this in Jesus' name so that somebody can bear witness in the house. If you are ready for what I'm about to read, somebody say, Apostle Fire. La Shanta Kabario Sake. If you are ready for what I'm about to read, somebody say, Apostle Fire. La Shaka Dalagaba. Maga Dalagaba Dalagaba. Riga Daleban Talimosi. Ibrake Telimosi Kaba. Ozake Telimo. Obali Kayen Dali Kateli. If you are ready for what I'm about to read, somebody say, Apostle Fire. Ma Shaka Gaga. The strength of God we read in three places. Psalms chapter 18 verse 32. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. God is that strength that will take you to the top. Not man. Not your strength. Not your uh, power. Come and look at somebody who has given up in, on himself. He has given up. I want to show you the description of Mephibosheth about himself. He couldn't have believed that God would take him to the top. Are you under the sound of my voice? You've given up hope of getting to the top. You don't believe that you can ever get to the top. God doesn't need your permission. God doesn't need your approval. God doesn't need, even sometimes, God doesn't need you to believe. Somebody say, God doesn't need me to believe. God doesn't need you to believe. 
Sometimes God doesn't need you to believe. I can see Apostle Fire. I'm going to read it very soon. God doesn't need you to believe. Sometimes, even some of us, your belief self might want to cause trouble. God doesn't even need you to believe. God just needs you to stay alive. Somebody type the word, stay alive. When God is ready to change the circumstances of your life, all God needs you to do is stay alive. Don't commit suicide. Don't send yourself to an early grave. Don't do any of such. Just wait and see the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. Just wait and see the salvation of the Lord. That was what Moses told Israel. He told Israel, he said, Israel, just today, wait and see the salvation of the Lord. This enemy that you have seen, you will never see again. So sometimes God doesn't need you to believe. God just needs you to stay alive. Stay alive. Hallelujah. I'm going to read something to you in 2 King, 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 7 and 8. 7, very powerful. 8, very powerful. I want to read something to you in 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 7 and 8. I'm saying it because some people, after broadcast, they sit down and they read these scriptures. So that's why we make sure... All along, I make sure the scripture is spot on for those who go back to study. And God bless you for going back to study the word of God. And may you have all this strength I'm talking about. Today, I am advertising the strength of God that can stop bitter tears. Today, I am advertising the strength of God that can take you to the top. It is not by might nor by power. Everyone that became celebrity, go and ask them. They became celebrity without them knowing they were going to be. What took them to the top? They did not expect it that it would take them to the top. They did not expect, if they knew that would take them to the top, they should have done it years ago. Everyone that became a celebrity, everyone that things became glorious for, they did not even know, they, they repeated almost the same thing they used to do normally. The only thing is that the strength of God was sandwiched into what they were doing and it took them to the top. Okay, Second Samuel chapter 9 verse 7. And David said unto him, fear not. You see, they brought him to David, he was scared. Who is that person under the sound of my voice? You're afraid. You're afraid. I am telling you, my God is taking you to the top. Because the weapons of your warfare, they are not carnal. They are not your physical hand. They are not your physical eyes. They are not your guns. They are not any skill that you have acquired on earth. They are not carnal. They are mighty through God. They are mighty through God. It's spiritual. Whether you agree or not, it's spiritual. And it's strength from above. And he has promised that strength in three places we have read. We are going to read before we round up this broadcast again. In Psalms chapter 18 verse 32. In Isaiah 45 verse 5. And of course in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. He promised that his strength will be there. For even somebody who doesn't believe. That's why I say my grace is sufficient. So even somebody who doesn't believe. That's why Jesus said if you have faith like a mustard seed. You see, Jesus made that provision because God said even my grace is sufficient. In your weakness, my strength is made perfect in your weakness of unbelief. In your weakness of unbelief, I will still give you strength. What else do we want from God? In our weakness of unbelief, He still promised to help us. If you are the type that is able to have faith, Psalms chapter 18 verse 32 is the one giving you that faith. If you are the one that you don't know God, but you see yourself doing very well, you say, I'm not here, before I got born again, God, things were still working out for me. It's Isaiah 45 verse 5 that's working for you. Even though you did not know God, yet his strength was still waking you up. Then if you are the type that does not even believe at all, his grace is sufficient. Because even in your weakness, in that low estate, his strength is made perfect. Hallelujah. So he said, fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. Can somebody be shown kindness because of the prayer you're praying today? Can God remember somebody because of you? Can God remember somebody because of me? Because of the goodness of Jonathan. Because of the selflessness of Jonathan. Can you be that kind of person in the eyes of God? Can God remember your son because of you? Can God remember your daughter because of you? Can God remember your spouse because of you? Can God remember your family because of you? Have you taken out time to sort out things? Have you used the strength of God in your life to favor your family? The Jonathan did and the Lord reminded David, remember your promise to David? There is somebody called Mephibosheth that needs to be favored. God saw Mephibosheth. Hallelujah. Who is that Jonathan under the sound of my voice? Put in prayer, put in prayer, prayer. Please put in prayer, prayer, prayer. And everyone that is capturing the scriptures, capturing the prophecy, everyone that is making things happen on this mountain, God 
who see in the secret openly reward you. All those who are winning souls with the apostle, all those who are winning souls with the Holy Spirit, all those who are winning souls with Jesus Christ on this mountain through the blood of Jesus Christ, all those who are sharing the broadcast, all those who are making sure that this work works, eternity will not fail to reward you in Jesus' name. This is the voice of David to Mephibosheth. For I will surely, without a shadow of doubt, show thee kindness. I will show thee kindness for Jonathan, thy father's sake. And will restore thee. I will restore thee all the land of the Saul, of Saul, thy father. I will restore thee all the land of Saul. I will restore unto you. And thou shalt eat bread of my table continually. Somebody, God will favor you. You're going to the top. God will favor you. You're going to the top. But remember that it is not your skills. It's not your intelligence. It's not because you know how to speak in tongues more than other people. It's not because you have fasted more than other people. It's mercy of God. It's the strength of God. It is just God. It's time to heal, heal, heal. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 3. The time of kill, kill, kill is over. It's time to heal. So it's the strength of God that heals and you will agree with me that he, all, even the doctors say that god heals they say the doctors care the nurses care but god heals because it's a strength you understand it is strength that makes people to be healed it's a particular energy and it cannot be mustered in the physical hallelujah hallelujah somebody will start to eat bread continually the season of you not eating bread is over you will eat bread continually as my god remembers you now the bread you're going to eat will have that language continually in jesus name somebody prophesy you will eat bread continually your family will eat bread continually in the name of jesus christ you will not eat bread you know in you know you know your eating of bread will not be truncated you will not eat bread in a truncated manner. You are not eating bread in a truncated manner. Today there's bread. Tomorrow there's no bread. Today there's manna. Tomorrow there's no manna. No. You will not eat bread in a truncated form. You are not eating bread truncated in a truncated manner. But you will eat bread in a continuous manner. Continuous manner. Continuous manner. God will supply you bread continually. Go and check the Lord's prayer in, in Luke chapter 11. He said, give us this day our daily bread because every day there will be supply. Every day. You are meant to eat bread continually for every day. Every day's bread is unique. Somebody, every bread that has been truncated in your life, every bread that has stopped, in Jesus' name, resume fully. This time, continually. Because you are eating on the table of the kings. You will never eat. I told you that you are never below. You are eating at the table of the kings. Jesus is the vine. You are the branch. You eat at that level. You don't eat at the ground level. In the name of Jesus. My God is taking you from ground level to the top. Nothing will bring you back to ground level in Jesus' name. It's a taboo for you to be at the ground level. It's a lie. You can never be. It is Christ that is there. It's not your position. There is never a branch on the floor. Always every branch is from the trunk up there. Jehovah makes you to eat on the table continually, not in a truncated manner, tr continually. This is what Mephibosheth did. This is the state of a lot of people that are, that are listening to me. But the Lord has changed your state. This is your state before you came to this mountain. This is the state of Mephibosheth before, uh, uh, before the Lord lifted him up. This is his state in front of David. Somebody be honest with your state. And as you're honest with your state, the Lord will transform you. As you're honest with your state, the Lord will transform you. For we guess not at the things that are temporal, but the things that are eternal. Second, Corin Second, Chronicles chap Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. We look not on things that are temporal, but uh, things that are what? Eternal. Why? Because temporal things will come and go but eternal will remain forever hallelujah verse 17 is the one telling us that that affliction will work for your good the affliction of Mephibosheth worked for his good the affliction worked for his good I'm going to read the affliction of Mephibosheth that worked for his good this is the confession of Mephibosheth in front of David how did you come into the presence of God today you will not remain the same in Jesus name however you have come into the presence of God man of God however you have come it's okay 
God is not going to chase you out, but you will not remain like that. Your son will not remain like that. That son you have brought into the presence of God will not remain like that. That daughter you have brought into the presence of God will not remain like that. Why? Because God will supply strength that will change things. He will supply strength. In the case of Mephibosheth, God did not ask his leg to be healed. God did not ask him to be healed, but the Lord changed his his status. The Lord changed his status that God can, with Mephibosheth, we know that God can still favor and bless disabled. It's not only Mephibosheth that happened to. In 2 Kings chapter 7, in 2 Kings chapter 7, God favored four leopards. Four leopards were taken to the top. Four leopards were the one who came to announce to Israel that God has changed the season, that the season has changed. Four leopard, they were sent out to go and die, but they came back with good news. Somebody, are you under the sound of my voice? Are you, the enemy sent you out to die? You're coming back with good news to your family. You're coming back with good news to your household members. You're coming back to tell them bitter cry is over. Bitter tears are over. You are taking them to the top in the name of Jesus Christ. Bitter cry is over. Bitter tears is over. Prophesy, man of God, prophesy. You cannot miss this. The devil knew what God wanted to do yesterday. He made the system to crash. But it's a lie. At least we sow the seed. We sow the seed of the word of God, which we will still use in this broadcast. We sow the seed. It's Bible study yesterday, but we were to pray and the devil stole that time. But now the Lord has given us with extra, extra, extra. This is what Mephibosheth said. Some of you are saying these things and the Lord will not permit you to live here this same way. You might have come to this mountain like this, but you will not leave this mountain this same way. It's a lie. You're living like the son of the king that you are. You're living in the capacity of 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5. That he called you a, li a lively stone. He called you a living stone. He called you a high priest that is offering spiritual sacrifices that is acceptable unto God. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5. You're living this mountain 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar person. You see, you're leaving this mountain prestigious. You're leaving this mountain in the level of, you know, First Peter chapter 5 verse 10. Oh, Saka Taliba, Ibrahim, Adon, Sikayabateli. You're living in the capacity of what? First Peter chapter 5, verse 10. Because God would have put everything that is with question mark in your life, He would have put it back in order. What is in second, what is in First Peter chapter 5, verse 10? It says, But the God of all grace, but the God of all grace, who had called us out, out who has called us unto eternal glory of Christ Jesus Christ. After that, He have suffered, after He have suffered a while. The same thing with 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17. This one calls it a while. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 calls it a moment. A moment. But he said, it will work for your good. S same thing in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10. The scriptures are the same. Whichever way you look at it, it's the same thing. That's why here he calls it after you have suffered a while. How would you leave this mountain? Because you have suffered a while before you came here. Mephibosheth has suffered a while before the Lord sent David to him. I will read the voice of Mephibosheth for you to know that he has suffered a while. He suffered so much that he saw himself as a dog. He called himself a dog. Thank God you have suffered, but you are not seeing yourself as a dog. Mephibosheth suffered to a point whereby he saw himself as a dog. In fact, a dog was better than him because here was a man with 15 sons staying in the prosperity of his father and he could not fight for himself. That's why he saw himself as a dog. Even some dog has more honor than him. Today, that mentality, my God, will change it. If you came to this mentality, if you came to this mountain with the mentality that you are a dog, my God will change your mentality and take you back to where you are meant to be. First Peter chapter 2, First Peter chapter 2, verse 5, First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, First Peter chapter 5, verse 10. God is taking you to that level. That's the level you're supposed to operate from. John chapter 15, verse 4. That's the level you're supposed to operate from. From that height, from that level. First, I, I repeat again. If you came here thinking that you are a dog, if you came here with the mentality of Mephibosheth, which is second, second Samuel chapter 9, verse 8. If if you came here with the mentality of 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 8, Mephibosheth called himself a dog. I'm saying before you leave this mountain, this is what God will do. God will change your mentality and change your level. It will change you to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. A lively stone, a high priest offering spiritual sacrifice. It will change your level to what? 1 Peter 
chapter 2 verse 9 a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar person it will change your level to first peter chapter 5 verse 10 the one i'm reading right now which of course after suffering a while he said the lord make you perfect the lord establish you the lord look at the word we are using today for prophecy strengthen so you understand that this strengthen is not carnal strength though this strengthening we are talking about is strength from god so you see he say it makes you perfect it's, it's established you strengthens you and said to you he said to you he said to you this is it my god will settle you come and see how god settled mephibosheth hallelujah look at the introduction from first peter chapter 5 verse 10 but the god of all grace because somebody you are going to get that grace today you will not get this grace you get grace you will not get this grace the god of all grace who had called us out who has called us unto eternal glory not momentary glory not truncated glory it's a continual glory it's an eternal glory if you check second corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 it calls it a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory that is the same glory they are talking about in first peter chapter 5 verse 10 is it not amazing the word of god is it not amazing a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory that's what second second corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 calls it but the same thing is captured here in first peter chapter 5 verse 10 look at it uh, he say it is eternal eternal glory that's how it didn't expand for that it just eternal glory but if you go to second corinthians 4 17 you enjoy it he say a far more exceeding eternal weight with momentum weight with density weight with momentum weight with density eternal weight of glory my god bam and you will see the kind of weight of glory that came on paul mephibosheth my god praise god he said after that he have suffered a while somebody your a while is over your a moment is over your a while is over the a while of kill 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 is over it's now the moment for god to heal 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 the a while of breakdown 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 ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 3 is over it's now a moment of build up build up build up make you perfect establish you strengthen you today we are focusing on the word strength strengthen you first strengthen you pick for um, psalms chapter 18 verse 32 strengthen you isaiah 45 verse 5 strengthen you second corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 strengthen you we are focusing on that word strength from today somebody will get strength strength is coming on you in jesus name and settled you let us see how god did these four things in the life of mephibosheth mephibosheth this was the description of mephibosheth and if you describe yourself like that today my god will cancel your confession it will cancel and change your confession and your level look at what the sovereign lord said he said and he bowed himself and said what is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as i am if you can underline it come and see it a dead dog as i am he did not even call himself a living dog he said it's a dog that has lost that has lost bearing he said who am i that you should have compassion on me that you should look on me a dead dog he did not say living dog oh. a dead dog like me this is the mentality of Mephibosheth. Oh, somebody under the sound of my voice. What kind of mentality did you come to this mountain with? The Lord changed that mentality for you. The Lord upgraded that mentality. Everyone that see themselves according to Psalms chapter 30 verse 3. If you see yourself in the grave, if you see yourself in the pit, this man saw himself from the point of Psalms chapter 30 verse 3. He saw himself in the grave. He saw himself in the dead, not even as a human being, as a dog, a dead dog dog how dare you want to have pity how dare you want to have mercy upon a dead dog like me is it a dead dog like me that you say is going to eat continually on the king's table but the lord has changed his level he might come as a dead dog but he's going back as a living lion somebody you came to this mountain as a dead dog but you're leaving this mountain as a living lion you're leaving this mountain with the lion of the tribe of judah possessing you you're leaving this mountain with the lion of the tribe of judah navigating you're living here those who knew you yesterday cannot recognize you again because of the unction and the, uh, the unction of god upon your life that will cause you to function 
because of the unction of God in your life that will cause you to function. You're leaving this mountain with the unction of God in your life that will make you to function. And this mesmerize your enemies. This mesmerize your enemies. Rashan Taliba negated the description of Mephibosheth about himself. A dead dog. A dead dog that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am a dead dog as I am for you to know that the level has changed the Lord made David to give a decree his words are powerful David spoke in 2nd Samuel chapter 9 verse 9 Second Samuel chapter 9 verse 9, restoration was fully made in 2nd Samuel chapter 9 verse 9. Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained to Saul and to all his house. Every, just as he's talking it, it has happened. He said, I give it by mouth. Because the mouth of David has strength. Listen to me very well. <laughs> this is David talking right now. He's telling him nothing, no document, no documentation. He's just speak, speaking right now. He said, "I have given to you, your servants. I've given to your 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 master's son. I've given him because there's strength in the mouth of David. Somebody, there's strength in your mouth. Somebody, there's strength. In, as you're saying it, it is happening right now, here and now." It is not, it's not for questioning. It's not for somebody to argue. Let me tell you, when you carry the strength of God in your body, what you say comes to pass. It's not for deliberation. David is not asking, what is your opinion? David is not saying, let people vote because we are practicing democracy. Nothing like that. If you have the strength of God in your mouth, if you have Psalm chapter 18 verse 32 in your mouth, if you have Isaiah 45 verse 5 in your mouth, if you have 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 in your mouth, you are not deliberating. You are decreeing. I practice it today. I told somebody, I give you 48 hours to correct things. If not, in the next seven days, this will happen. I didn't ask. It's a decree. I have just summoned up the angels to, 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 to get at work. David summoned up the angels. There was no, nothing written. It's verbal. You have to understand some of this scripture before you speak. You have to know which, which scripture you are referring to. Then you speak. Because you're speaking not words. You're speaking, you're speaking, you're speaking rema. You're speaking the zoe. The life of God is what you're speaking out. Then the king, right there, is just a, he called to Ziba, Ziba, come here, come here. And he said, he called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given, it's not a question, I have given unto thy master's son, which is Mephibosheth, all that pertained to Saul and all of his house have given unto him. Thou therefore, listen, instruction. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. You shall till the land for him. And thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. That thy master's son may have food to eat. But he doesn't even need their food because their food with or without their food, is already eating on the king's table. That thy master's son might have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, <laughs> somebody today, the Lord will make an exception with your name. The Lord will make an exception with your name, both spiritually, physically, and every sense you can think of, financially. But Mephibosheth, God will make an exception with your name. God will make an exception in, in terms of affliction. Healing is coming. It might not be healing, might not be common with everybody, but with you, there will be an exception. Financially, God will make an exception with your name. Spiritually, God will make an exception with your name. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Shall eat bread always at at my table. Now, listen to this. Now, Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. 15 sons and 20 servants. Imagine what was afflicting Mephibosheth. 30 what? How many is the 15 sons plus 12 plus 20? That's 35. And Ziba, that's 36. 36 people were afflicting 
Mephibosheth, the same 36 people started to walk out for him a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. They started to walk for him. Everything that has afflicted you before you came to this mountain, everything that afflicted you that made you to see yourself as a dead dog, Ah, be it Ziba and his 15 sons and 20 servants. Ziba, 15 sons and 20 servants, all of them put together, they start to work out in your life. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17. A far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. They start to work out in your life. They start to work out in your life. A far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. They start to work out in your life. Not by might, nor by power. Not by might, nor by power. In the name of Jesus Christ. The affliction of your life starts to walk the glory of God in your life. The affliction proud before now, the affliction proud before now starts to walk the eternal weight of glory of God in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Did this happen or not? Let us look at verse 11, 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 11. Let us, I've just read, I've just read 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 10 and 11. I've just read 2, 2, 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse, verse 9, verse 10. I'm going to read verse 11. Let us see what David said did it come to pass. What David said did it come to pass. Let us see verse 11. Then said Ziba unto the king, that is to David, according to all that thy, according to all that my lord the king had commanded, his servant, so shall thy servant do. As as for Mephibosheth, as for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's son. So Ziba concord, Ziba concord, Ziba concord. Ziba concord. Where am I going? Somebody under the sound of my voice, are you sick and you need healing? That sickness must concord. Are you under the sound of my voice? Are you in any form of any plague? That plague must concord. Uh, that plague must concur. Are you attacked, afflicted by demons? Those demons must concord because Mephibosheth Ziba concord to the decree of the king. Somebody, if you have the strength of God in your mouth, as you are decreeing instantly, it will be happening in the spirit. As you are decreeing instantly, it will be happening in the spirit. Shale katali brantalius. Shale katali brantalius. As you are decreeing, it will be happening instantly in the spirit. Somebody decree, declare. Somebody declare, decree. As you are decreeing right now, it will be so. Every Ziba of your life, every sons of Ziba, whether 15 of them, every servant of Ziba, whether 20 of them, all of them put together 36, they are going to serve the glory of God in your life. They are going to serve the glory of God in your life. They are going to serve the glory of God in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, somebody put in prayer. Somebody put in prayer, prayer. Something is happening in the spirit realm. Mephibosheth, for you to know that Mephibosheth had a son. Mephibosheth had a son. If you come with me to verse and Mephibosheth had a young son. He had a young son whose name was what? Mika. He was Mika. And all that dwelled in the house of, of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. All that dwelled somebody every affliction is coming to serve you all that dwell in the house of ziba that was afflicting ziba and his son micah all what was afflicting ziba and his son micah all of them started to serve ziba and his son somebody under the sound of my voice what was afflicting you before you came to this holy mountain start to serve you and serve your sons start to serve you and serve your daughters start to serve you and serve your spouse start to serve you and serve your family in the name of jesus Somebody put in prayer. Somebody put in prayer, prayer. Somebody put in prayer, prayer, prayer. La gada la gada la gaba. Masha ke parima e palimoso. To kali bantali. I say it start to serve you and start to serve your household member. It start to serve you and start to serve your family. It start to serve you and start to serve every family member of your. It start to serve in the name of Jesus. Ne gada la gaba. Ni katali bro sakeli. Ni katali bro sakeli. O sali kabatali moso kaya O sali kabat Somebody 
Dali mosu kayanda li Honga gagaga baranga dali mosi Baranga dali mo ukatali Baranga dali mosi Baranga dali mo sakatali Baranga dali mosi Jegedeli katali Who is that person that describes himself or herself Right now in Jesus name That description the Lord counsel it The Lord tear it down The Lord counsel it The Lord tear it down The God that showed himself faithful to Mephibosheth Show himself faithful unto you And that's why we're looking at the strength That God is going to supply the strength God is going to supply. The strength God is going to supply. The strength God is going to supply in the name of Jesus Christ. Some people play dangerous play. Some people play dangerous play. You see, in the case of Mephibosheth, the Lord had mercy on Mephibosheth. In the case of Mephibosheth, the Lord had mercy. But some people weren't that lucky. Some people weren't that blessed. Because there was no mercy made available to some people. What they said came to pass in their life. God will not make you like the example I'm about to show right now. The example I'm about to show is a worst case scenario. A worst case scenario, God will not make it to be your portion. Because in the case of this particular person, the person did not escape. Here we see in verse 8 where Mephibosheth called himself a dead dog and the Lord had mercy. I was listening to a prayer mandate, and that prayer mandate was saying, God of mercy, God who now to show mercy, show mercy unto me. That person is under the sound of my voice now. You can see the kind of prayer you would have used, the scripture you would have used. God who had mercy on Mephibosheth who used negative statement. Oh, Lord God, I have mercy upon me. <laughs> because there is nothing more negative than what Mephibosheth said here. He called himself a dead dog, but the Lord had mercy on him. But let me tell you, Esau was not that fortunate. Esau was not that fortunate. Esau felt it was just an ordinary statement, but the Lord took it farther than what Esau thought. Esau thought it was just an ordinary statement, but the Lord took it farther than what Esau could comprehend, more than what Esau could believe. The Lord is a spirit, and they that must worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit must worship him. Do those that must worship the Lord, they that must worship the Lord, must worship him what in truth and in spirit. They have to. It's not optional. It is. It must be that way. Ma ga 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 ga. Ezenteli ba katali. Ezenteli ba katali. O dali katali mosi. Zebake le baran dalios. Zebake le baran dalios. Zebake le baran dalios. O bare katali mosi kaba. Ebrale katali. Ebrale katali. O bare kaladali mosi kaba. Come with me to Genesis chapter 25 verse 29 to 34. Genesis 25 from verse 29 to 34. Mephibosheth escaped. Second Kings chapter 9 verse 8. Mephibosheth escaped with a negative confession. But Esau did not escape. Esau did not escape. So in case you have made pronouncement like that of Esau, this is the time to correct it. Plead with the Lord. Grace is different though. Grace is different. Mephibosheth already have something he was nursing already. He's already, he's already born disabled anyway. So nobody knows how God does it. But I'm just giving scripture that example. That in case you have made this kind of blunder. Uh, that of, that of uh, Mephibosheth was pardoned. Uh, in fact, I think Mephibosheth made this description after the Lord have pardoned him and blessed him. Because David has already said that he's going to be sitting on the king's table to be feeding continually before he said ah me a dead dog like me can god remember me but this one before god will lift him up he made a pronouncement are you with me genesis 25 verse 29 to 34 genesis 25 verse 29 to 34 once once when jacob was cooking some stew esau came in from from open country famished he said unto jacob quick let me have some of the red stew I'm famished. That is why that place was called Edom. Okay, so verse 31. Jacob replied, first sell me your birthright. First sell me your birthright. First sell me your birthright. If you look at the case of Mephibosheth and Ziba, it was as if the birthright of Mephibosheth had been sold. In fact, not just the birthright of Mephibosheth, it was more like the birthright of Mephibosheth and his son Micah had been sold. 
Okay, in this one, it was direct negotiation. Nobody told Mephib um, Mephibosheth to sell his birthright anyway, but they took over his birthright. They took over his, her his inheritance. Who is that person under the sound of my voice? Has the enemy taken over your life, taken over your inheritance, taken over the things that God intended for you to enjoy? I tell you today, heaven will take it back and give it to you in Jesus' name. Heaven will snatch it from them and give it to you. If you turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away from, from off your face in Jesus' name. Jacob said to him, verse 31, First, sell me your birthright. 32. Look, I am after I am I'm about to die, says Esau. I'm about to die. Esau said, What good is the birthright to me? What good? Of what good if I die? Of what good is birthright to me? Verse 33. But Jacob said, Even though you're about to die, even though the birthright means nothing to you, swear to me first. Swear to me first. Is there anybody under this on the under the sound of my voice that has sworn allegiance to any power? Has sworn any allegiance? Start to break it right now. If you have made any secret covenant, if you have made any offering to the powers of darkness to their altar, that is a form of swearing because you have just brought a covenant point. You have to you have to break it right now. Swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. He swore an oath. He swore an oath. So if you go back to yesterday's broadcast, that's why what we read in that broadcast came to pass. Because of this, he swore. And some of us, we need to be careful of our of what we say, especially when the strength of God takes over your mouth. If the strength of God is in your mouth, you have to be careful of your utterances. It can be very costly. To him, he thought he was just joking. To him, he said he was just talking. Just let me eat. Let me see how you can collect battle right. Is it not something spiritual? Is it not something that God is in charge? How can you collect it? But you forgot that you swore and you made God a, a reference point. You made him a witness to it. He swore and then said, today so, so shall it be. Then, verse 34, then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some, some, uh, some of the stew. And he ate and drank and then got up and left. To him, everything is over. Somebody in the name of Jesus Christ, have you transferred the grace of God in your life by mistake? Have you transferred, where did you take an offering to? Some of some of these people are talking about, they will not bring offering to church, oh. they will not bring offering to support the work of God because they can bring take an offering to the junction of the street. They can take an offering to an evil altar. They can take an offering to so, 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 and so place. That offering is the same thing as swearing because they've just told you, bring a covenant point. Somebody under the sound of my voice. Any covenant, every covenant that you have made, consciously or unconsciously, only you can break it to. Say, I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, I destroy it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Somebody start to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. This is why Jacob could describe himself as Esau and it went through. This is why even when the man blessed Jacob, Jacob was blessed. Uh, there was an amendment made for me through the Holy Spirit. Somebody said, after all, Jacob suffered for what he did. Yes, he suffered. He suffered 21 years, but in that 21 years, he was already living in that in that present continuous. He was living in blessing because in that pre he was still seeing those cattle that became his own. He was still eating with ease. He was not suffering, but he was suffering. He was suffering lack of freedom. So he did not have freedom to express those things or to use those things until the set time. Until the set time, there was no freedom. Okay? That was the only thing he suffered. But Esau suffered properly. Esau suffered under hot sun. Suffered days of starvation. Jacob did not know any starvation. Jacob did not know. Because part of the blessing that came upon Jacob is that wherever he goes to, the heavens will be open and there will be rain and the earth will be fat. Go and see how, how many livestock he came out with. Because the earth where he was was fat. He was able to feed those livestock and was able to own those livestock. So the, he was living in the blessing but under punishment. You see, that is better than the other person who was living in a curse and under serious close heavens because he forgot that there's power in his statement. He forgot there is power in what you say. Although Bible said that the father told him, you have to seek with bitter, with bitter, you know, cry. You have to seek it with crying, with bitter tears. You have to seek your birthright again. So while he was busy crying almost on daily basis and begging God to restore, Jacob did not cry one day, but there was still punishment for him because he used human method to collect that blessing. God who said that the junior would be greater than the senior knew what he was going to do. And some of us would behave like that. Immediately you hear prophecy, you start to walk yourself to prophecy. 
It is not for you to walk yourself into the prophecy. Some people will be saying, prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. Immediately you tell them that this is what God is saying. They will start to walk themselves. They say, hey, God sent this. So let me position myself. Let no, God doesn't need your assistance to do it. God doesn't need my assistance. If he says he's going to do this until he will do it, you will not know. Because Jacob helped heaven. Jacob needed to be kept under lack of liberty. He did not allow the spirit. Remember I showed you 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse verse 17 that where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty if only he allowed the spirit of the lord to work out that promotion for him or that blessing for him there will not be need for him to be in under bondage for 21 years he used the human power to get it though he was still in the blessing but there was no liberty because it was not the spirit who gave him that blessing if you get a blessing without the spirit of god you will not have the liberty to enjoy it you will not have the liberty it is only the gift of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Some people can make themselves rich. Yes, as far as this earth is concerned, there's power. Some people can make themselves rich, but the only thing is that there will be sorrow for them. That's the difference between the one from God and the one from human wisdom or strength or might. Yes, you can make yourself rich, but there will never be long life. Because only Psalm 91, the last verse 16, that say, with long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. If you get it the human way, there will not be long life. If you get it the human way, it will, there will not be prosperity. There will, it, will not be, it will not be forever. Yes, that is the difference. There will not be liberty. You can get it and there's some people, they get it, they are bound in one position. They get it, they cannot move. They get it, they, so let God do what he's going to do. Somebody stop helping heaven. Stop helping heaven. Stop the manipulation. Stop the manipulation. Stop the permutation. Stop the permutation. Stop doing one, two, three, four, two, four, five. Stop permutating. Let heaven have his way. Surrender to the Lord. Surrender to the Lord. Look at the, the blessings of God, the way it came. It was not Mephibosheth that manipulated. It was not Mephibosheth that permutated. Look at how it came in 2 second, second Samuel chapter 9. 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 7 and verse 8. Look at the way it came, verse 7, verse 8, verse 9, verse 10, verse 11. Because Mephibosheth agreed. And, and, and also Ziba agreed with his 30, 30, uh, with his. 35 man gang. He agreed with his 35 man gang. 15 sons, 20 servants that were more or less like a son. What we call a born servant. That is servant that have become like a son unto him. Everyone in his household were servant unto Mephibosheth. I decree today in the name of Jesus Christ. Every affliction of your life start to walk for you a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. Every affliction you have ever experienced in life and in destiny. Every affliction your family has ever experienced in life and in destiny. It starts to walk for them a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. Not by might, not by power. Not by the wish of any man, but by the spirit of God. It starts to walk a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody put in prayer. Put in prayer, prayer. Somebody put in prayer, prayer, prayer. Lash. Every dead dog under the sound of my voice revive. Every dead dog under the sound of my voice revive. Every dead dog come alive in Jesus' name. Every dead dog leave this mountain as a living lion. Leave this mountain as a living lion. In the name of Jesus Christ, the grace of God possess you. The power of God possess you. The mercy of God possess you in the name of Jesus Christ the grace of God Pray in the spirit. Please get your bottle of water ready and type the word ready. I'm saying that somebody under the sound of my voice, there's provision for everybody. <coughs> Even when you have no faith, there's provision for you. 
even when you have no faith, the Lord is merciful, there's provision, and that's why you have Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, because he says in your weakness, he will be your strength. In your weakness, his strength will be made perfect in our weaknesses. So there's provision for you, there's provision for me, there's provision for everybody, there's provision for anyone, everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ma shantali kaba taliu. Ma shantali baka taliu. Ma shali baka taliu. O ragaba baba legada lagaba. Put in prayer, put in prayer, prayer. Put in prayer, prayer, prayer. I see the glory of God, I see. I see the mercy of God, I see. I see God honor somebody. Look at how God honor Mephibosheth even when everybody felt it was over for him. Do you feel it is over for you? Not when God is on, on the throne. Not under the watch of God Almighty. Not under the watch of the Holy Spirit. It's not over for you until God says so. It is not over for you until Jesus says so. It's not over for you because of the blood of Jesus Christ. For your sake, he took your position. He took my position. Isaiah 53 verse 5. He was wounded for your sake. He was chastised for your sake. He was wounded for our sake. Our chastisement was placed upon him. Somebody in the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus has taken your position. Even if you were like, even if you were like, that, like, like this particular example, Esau, Jesus has taken that position. 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 That's why today you are leaving this mountain testifying. That's why today you are leaving this mountain full of joy, full of joy, full of joy, full of his glory. That's why you're leaving this mountain with testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody join me and start to command yokes to be broken. Command yokes to be broken. Yoke that can be seen, yoke that cannot be seen. Yoke of affliction to say the least. Yoke of affliction of any kind, of any type. Oh Lord, let that yoke be broken in Jesus' name. Let yokes be broken. Yoke of any kind, yoke of any type. Yoke of any kind, yoke of any type. Let that yoke be broken. Something is happening. Something is happening. And I thank God for those who are very sensitive in the spirit. I thank God for those who are sensitive in the spirit spirit those that came to this mountain as dogs dead dogs but the lord has revived them i see god reviving you i see god revive you you came like a dead dog but you're living like a, they are living here as a living lion because the spirit of the lord is what is reviving you is putting life into you all over again everything that is dead around you becomes alive again somebody please see what the spirit of the lord is doing please see what the lord is doing please catalan I know what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church right now. Put in prayer, put in prayer, prayer, put in prayer, prayer, prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, the God who changed the level of Mephibosheth. That God changed your level. That God changed your level. That God changed your level. In the name of Jesus Christ. That God changed your level. Your level changes to 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5. To 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5. Your level changes to 1 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5, a living stone, a high priest, a high a high priest of God Almighty offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable unto God. Your level changes. Your level changes to 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar person, one that has been called to show forth the praises of God Almighty. Your level changes. Your level changes. Man of God, your level changes. Your level changes in the name of Jesus Christ and nothing can take you back. Your level changes to 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10. After you have suffered a while, after you have suffered a while, your level changes in Jesus' name. The Lord make you perfect. The Lord establish you. The Lord give you strength. The Lord strengthen you. The Lord settle you. Your level change. Your level changes to, four, to John 15 verse 4 and 5. To John 15 verse 4 and 5. Your level changes because Jesus becomes the vine and you are the branch. You are the branch. You are the top. You are the branch. You are the top. Your level changes. You can never be at the ground level. It's not possible. It's not possible. You cannot be at the ground level. Ma lagada lagaba. Bitter cry over. Bitter cry over. See you at the top. The God who had mercy on Mephibosheth, who took him from the ground level and took him to the top, who made him to sit amongst the kings, who made him to sit amongst Second Samuel chapter 9, Second Samuel chapter 9, verse 7, verse 8, verse 9, verse 10, verse 11. Even Ziba confirmed that they will do exactly what David said. Mind you, 
that the Lord changed the level of Ziba and yet Ziba was still bearing fruits because fruits were brought to him. Somebody, you don't have to labor to bring fruits. You don't have to labor to bring fruits because the same affliction is the one that will start to labor for you now. Your affliction will labor for you. Ziba, 15 sons and 20 servants, 36 of them started to bring results. Started to bring Luke chapter 10 verse 11. When Bible said that the harvest is plenty, laborers are few. The Lord provided laborers as the ones that were afflicting Ziba. Ziba, sorry, as the one that was afflicting Mephibosheth, which is Ziba and his sons and the servants. Okay, so he said the laborers are few, but the Lord provided the laborers. Somebody under the sound of my voice, listen to me. That affliction that is afflicting your family, that affliction that is afflicting your generation will become the laborers that will bring harvest to you. I prophesy into your life. I have shown the scripture. Now I'm prophesying as the apostle of the Most High God, as the apostle of the New Testament through the blood of Jesus Christ. I said and I quote that the afflictions of your life recorded in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. That light, that light affliction or that affliction that is for a moment. I mean the light suffering that you go through according to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. That light suffering becomes a laborer that will start to bring the harvest promise in Luke chapter 10 verse 2. That the harvest is plenty. Laborers are few. The Lord convert all your all the afflictions of your life to the laborers that will bring harvest unto you. As he converted all the affliction of, of Mephibosheth to bring harvest to Mephibosheth on the king's table. Second Samuel chapter 9 verse 10 and verse 11. Everything was brought to him. Even though meal was no more problem somebody under the sound of my voice you will never you telling god oh lord give me my daily bread it will not be an issue again because when god changes your level and you start to eat on the king's table you don't you whether you pray or not your meal is taken care of because you're eating from god's table you're eating from god's table and god's table can never lack God is supplying all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. God is rich unto everyone that will ask of him. That is what Romans chapter 10 verse 12 says. Romans chapter 10 verse 12 says that God does not consign himself whether you are Jew or Greek. It does not matter to God. But everyone that comes to God, he is faithful and just and righteous enough to supply everyone. He is rich enough to give everyone. I paraphrase. Let me read for those who probably who will need the word the way it is Romans chapter 10 verse 12 God is able to supply everyone and anyone for there is no difference between the Jews and the Greek as far as God is concerned whether you are African, Caucasian, whether you are Asian, whether you are from any part of the world it does not matter to God what matters to God is that his strength is inside of you that gives you life and gives you the ability to pray the right prayer for there is no difference between the Jews and the Greek for the same Lord for the same Lord over all is rich. And that's where I'm going. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. He is rich unto all that call upon him. The God who answered Mephibosheth will answer you today. God is rich. He can supply each and every one of us and not even know that he has done anything anyway. He will supply each and every one of us. He will not even feel it. Heaven will not even feel it that they've done anything. So don't say, I don't want to disturb God. Don't say, my disturbing God is too much. Don't say, God will be tired of my prayer request. Who told you? Who told you? Put the request through. Even if your prayer request is as big as this whole wide world, God will answer you. What do I mean? Come with me to Psalms chapter 2. Come with me to Psalms chapter 2. God has already made provision. You only need to see it in the world. Even if you ask for the whole wide world, God said I will give it to you. It's nothing to me. I'll give it to you. That is just one out of the galaxies. God created several galaxies. If you care to like, ask God for the whole galaxy. He's going to give you anyway. Let us read first. Let's read somewhere chapter 2 verse 7. Samuel chapter 2 verse 7. I will declare the decree and the Lord has said unto me thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Now verse 8 that's where I'm going. Ask of me and I will give thee the, the hidden for inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth. If you like ask for the whole earth. God can give you. Even the uttermost part of the earth. So I'm sure nobody wants to ask for the whole earth here. So you say, oh no, my prayer request is too much. I'll be asking God. I've been the only one putting prayer requests. God said, ask for even, ask for the whole earth. I'll give you. you. You can never weary God with your prayer request. You can never have prayer requests that makes God to be tired and start to scream. Wow, is this all the thing you want to ask me? God say, ask. Ask up to the uttermost part of the earth. I will supply it. To the uttermost part of the earth, I will give you for a possession. 
I will give you for imagine somebody owning the whole earth. Imagine somebody owning half of the earth, meaning any part of the earth you go to buy, you have to pay land rent to the person. God say, Ask me, I'll give you. You'll be the owner of, of the uttermost part of the earth. So your prayer request can never bamboozle God. Your prayer request can never make God go have sleepless night. Your prayer request cannot make God have sleepless night. He that keepeth us do not sleep nor slumber. Behold, Jehovah, I am that I am. El Shaddai, El Lohika, El Lohino, El Lohim. He does not slumber nor sleep. You cannot do something that will make him go into stagger into sleep. You cannot say anything that will make God faint. There's no prayer request you want to put through that will make God faint. He made a, a he made a defenseless man. A defenseless man, helpless man with his son. He made a man that could not stand up for his right. He made a man that has forgotten that he has the royal blood flowing in his veins. He made that man, he restored that man back to royalty. Somebody join me as we start to pray for the power of restoration. There is nothing God cannot restore. He, in fact, he believed that he was a dead man. He, he meant nothing to his son according to him. He could not profit his son. He said, how can you remember a dead dog like me? Somebody with a royal blood calling himself a dead dog. Are you under the sound of my voice? You have been given so much prophecy by men of God. You have forgotten all this prophecy. In fact, you're like somebody who have never entered church before. You're like somebody who have never received one prayer before. Today, my God will restore you. Today, my God will revive you. My God will restore you. The Lord has seen all your suffering. The Lord has seen all your pain. You have suffered but for a moment. It is now time for God to make you perfect. It is not man. Remember, the mistake we make is that we think, oh, go back to school. Oh, go acquire another skill. These things are good, but that can never make you rich. You can never get from man what will make you rich. If not, that man himself will be, richer, will be the richest in the whole world. Whatever you get from man can never make you rich. It's only God that can make you rich. Because it's God that is rich. A rich can make another rich. It's God that owns the earth. Bible said in Psalm 24 from verse 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the wall and they that dwell therein. Only him can make you rich. And when he makes you rich like that, he will give you liberty. Okay? You will have long life to enjoy that wealth. Not like the powers of darkness that will give you cap and take your head. That will give you shoe and take your leg. They will give you house and take all the family. So you alone will be in the whole house. What is the need of the house when you don't have anyone to share with? They'll give car and they take your hand and leg. How do you want to drive the car? No, my God will give you car and give you what to use to enjoy the car. In fact, look at how God put him back as royalty and gave him servants and slaves for life. He never touched any manual work anymore. All his manual job was being done by all the afflictions of his life. Ziba, his 15 sons, and the 20 slaves. They were the one doing the maniac work for him. The Lord restored the glory in your life. The Lord restored his glory in your life. The Lord restored you back to the top. See you at the top. I wasn't joking. When the Lord gave me that word, that it's a prophetic work he gave to me. I say, say it on the mountain. Say to somebody, see you at the top. This, I've given an uh, a new testament was what we use john chapter 15 verse 4 and 5 we use as example see you at the top today we are seeing also from the old testament how god made somebody who had zeroed out on life back to the top and gave him liberty to enjoy he enjoyed that position with long life and with happiness and with joy the prosperity my god is bringing into your life today if you are the one god has sent me to and you're catalambanning what i'm saying and you are grasping everything that i'm saying and you're claiming it by fire by force i am saying that with long life, Psalm 91 verse 16, with long life I will satisfy you and show you my salvation is the promise of God. So the blessings of God coming is coming with long life. It's not coming with illness, with sickness. That man that Jesus healed in John chapter 5 in John chapter 5 verse 8 and 9 he told him, pick up your bed and go. Let me tell you that man left and that man enjoyed several more years, even though he had been in pain and in, sit in that situation for 38 years. Somebody, how long you have been is not what matters. When God changed your story, how well you are going to live is what you should focus on. Let the glory of God meet with somebody today. Let the King of glory meet with somebody today. Oh Lord, restore. Restore, oh God, restore. Every year that the canker worm, the caterpillar, the poma worm, you know, has eaten. Daddy, restore. Restore, oh God, in Jesus' name. 
Holy Spirit, break fallow grounds for people on this mountain. Break fallow ground. You are the one who broke the fallow ground in the life of Mephibosheth and his son Micah. Oh Lord, break fallow grounds in Jesus' name. Are you not the one who changed the destiny of four leopards? They were sent out of the gate of Israel to go and die. They were sent out, 2 Kings chapter 7. I'm not going to read that. I'm going to paraphrase to everyone. If you have the time, you can read it. They were sent out to go and die. But this four leopard, they heard a voice inside of them tell, telling them, go back, go back to Israel. Go back to the gate of Israel. They deliberated within themselves. If we remain here, we will die. If we go back there, we will die. Hey, let us just be brave. Let's go back. And they decided to go back. As they were coming, imagine them on the floor. Coming and, you know, because they are no hand, no leg. What was left of the hand, what was left of the leg, they were using to come back with leprosy everywhere. But when the soldiers that were, that had, you know, that has created a siege over the, over the Israelites, heard that sound, all of them took to their heel that, oh, Israel have gone to call an ally to come and attack us from the back. But there was a prophecy behind the gate. The prophet told them that by this time tomorrow, the most expensive grain was going to be gotten for just a shekel, which is like in England, we say one P, or in, England, in America, they call one cent. The, the, lowest, the lowest of the currency. It say you the lowest of the currency will command a bag of how much of grain that you, that people were fighting to get. He said by tomorrow it will be that cheap. And somebody said that even if God were to open the windows of heaven and pour out, it could never happen. The prophet turned and said, you will see with your eyes, you will not taste with your mouth. Please, in Jesus' name, may the grace of God be sufficient for you today. Don't doubt what God will do. Don't doubt. If somebody had told Mephibosheth by this time tomorrow, you'll be sitting on the king's table. He would have said it can never be possible. Somebody under the sound of my voice, I want you to type and confess with me 24-hour miracle. There is somebody here, just confess with me 24-hour miracle nine times and see God surprise you. 24-hour miracle. It is your portion, man of God. It is your portion, woman of God. 24-hour miracle, you want to type it nine times. 24 hour miracle, 24 hour miracle, 24 hour miracle. 24 hour miracle, 24 hour miracle, 24 hour miracle. 24 hour miracle, 24 hour miracle, 24 hour miracle. I say it on behalf of everyone that is on this broadcast, on behalf of my children, on behalf of my spouse, on behalf of my family members. I say it even on behalf of the people that are doubting me under the sound of my voice. So that God can use that to draw you closer. So that God can use that to draw you closer. You will see and you will eat. Although the man who doubted behind the gate was told you will see, you will not eat. And as he rushed to go and get his portion, he was trampled under feet and he died. And the saying came to pass. But who were the people God used for this 24-hour miracle? The four lepers that were sent out to go and die. And that was how God made them rich in Israel. They became so rich because they, were, they had wisdom. They stuck up for themselves enough before they, call, they knock on the gate. Because of course, who will remember them? You will think they will sit down and be begging forever. Somebody, when God opened door for you, may God grant you wisdom to retain wealth. Because a lot of people, God will give them wealth and they will waste it. They will waste it. They think God gave it to you for you to use wisdom to tie wealth down. Wealth has wings to fly. But you have to create enough love around you so that wealth will stay and fall in love with you and stay forever. God has given wisdom. When wealth comes, create enough, create enough, create enough love around you so that wealth will stay. Wealth will stay wherever there's love. Oh. But when there's no love, wealth will fly away. Oh. <laughs> This four leopard had wisdom to tie wealth down. I pray for somebody that as my God visits you in the next 24 hours, the wisdom to tie down that wealth, the wisdom to tie down prosperity, the wisdom to tie down. Look, Mephibosheth had the wisdom to tie down. The wisdom to tie down. If Mephibosheth has asked some people to kill Ziba and his sons, then now that God has remembered him, who would have been working for him? Where would he get such labor? Where will he get such force? The wisdom to tie down wealth. Today people might look at you as being foolish. Today people will say, but this man knows his right. Why is he not fighting? This woman knows his, her right. Why is she not fighting? But may that God, may God who gives wisdom to tie down wealth, give you the wisdom to tie down your wealth in the name of Jesus Christ. Why didn't Jesus come down from the cross? Jesus had the power and he said it. If I ask my father for angels to 
be despised. They will come right now. Why didn't Jesus do that? Why? God gave him wisdom. God gave him patience. Hebrew chapter 10 verse 36. Hebrew 10 36. God gave him wisdom. God gave him what? God gave him patience. In fact, Hebrew chapter 10 verse 35 36. Verse 35 36. God gave him courage. God gave him courage and wisdom and God gave him patience. Hebrew chapter 10 verse 35 36. For he said, cast not away your confidence that has a great recompense of reward. He said, for ye have need of patience that after doing the will of God, you might receive the promise thereof. You see, some people, you see, at the end, not that Jesus knew, Jesus, what Jesus knew that it was right for him to pay that price. After all, he's the one that said, Father, send me. God said, who will we send? Who will go? And Jesus said, send me, I will go. But what will happen after he did not know? It's only the father who knew. And that's what Jesus said. That only the father knows. So it's not like Jesus knew. But there was wisdom. There was strength. That strength and wisdom that manifested in Jesus may it manifest in you, may it manifest in you and me in Jesus' name. That strength that manifested in Jesus Christ may it manifest in you and me in Jesus' name. That confidence, that patience that manifested in Jesus Christ may it manifest in you. That patience, that wisdom that manifested in Mephibosheth May God grant you also that wisdom. That wisdom, that strength that manifested in the four leopard, 2 Kings chapter 7, may that also manifest in you in the name of Jesus. And the wisdom to tie down wealth, the wisdom to tie down prosperity, may God grant unto you, grant unto your lineage, grant unto anyone, everyone related to you by blood in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody put in prayer, put in prayer, prayer, put in prayer, prayer, prayer. So that is why the blessings that were released had to stay with Jacob because somebody swore. Are you under the sound of my voice? No wonder Psalms chapter 24 say, he that does not live up his heart unto vanity nor swear deceitfully okay so no swearing of any kind and that's why we saw in the book of matthew chapter 5 verse 37 matthew chapter 5 verse 37 matthew chapter 5 verse 37 it says let your yes be yes and let your no be no okay don't engage in so much of i swear i swear i swear and when you swear even make sure that you are swearing in line with the will of god don't just swear anyhow because you can think that ah, i'm just saying it i don't mean it god knows god will understand god would reformat my statement god will refurbish my statement god will reformat my statement god will refurbish my statement god will refresh my statement god will resuscitate my statement because you know i did not say it i did not mean it that way god will not do that the spirit realm does not do that if you put your your words true it will become tangible look at ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 4 ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 4 when thou vowest a vow unto god defy not to pay it defy not when you swear in the name of god defy not because heaven doesn't recognize all those things defy not to pay it for he had no pleasure in fools who do not know the power in their mouth he has no pleasure in fools pay that which thou has vowed if we swear stand by what you have sworn or else don't swear. Then stay with Matthew chapter 5 verse 37. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. Be a man of your word. Be a woman of your word. Stay by the integrity of the word. But if you dare swear, then stay by the consequences if you deviate. Or stay by the blessings if you do not deviate. But God said don't need to swear. Just go by the power of the word in your mouth. The strength that God has put in you. Somebody receives strength. Somebody receives strength to serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. Receive strength. Get your bottle of water ready, man of God, woman of God. Get your bottle of water ready and put the word ready. Put the word ready. Get your bottle of water ready and put the word ready. God is not interested in the vows of fools. God is not interested in the vows of fools. Jacob brought a vow, Jacob brought an offering, and Esau brought an offering, but Esau brought an offering after foolish vow, after swearing that his birthright goes to the brother. So, the offering of the brother was preferred to his own offering. Today, I don't know what you're offering on this mountain. I don't know what your offering is, maybe praise. Maybe your offering is what? Prayer. Maybe your offering is the word of God. You're quoting the word of God. Maybe your offering is souls. You're winning souls. Maybe your offering is a donation on this mountain. Maybe your offering is just, you know, encouraging or winning souls. Whatever your offering is, make sure that your word, what you have sworn before now, tallies with your offering. If not, if your vow is not tallying with your offering, it can be disregarded. 
the offering of Esau was disregarded until he went back to do the right thing. Until he sought the face of God and made correction. Even Cain, the same thing. The offering of Cain was rejected. And, of, and Cain thought he could do it manually. He went and killed the brother. And the Lord put affliction on him. Genesis chapter 4. Until Cain came back again and made restitution. And made correction. And apologized. And said that this pain, this vow, this punishment is too much for me. Have mercy upon me. Then the Lord had mercy upon him. Then the Lord put a mark on his forehead. And said anybody that touches Cain, I will avenge seven times. There is room if in case you have made a vow or you have made a wrong move. You can repent like Cain repented. You can repent like Cain repented and the Lord will have mercy. You can repent like Esau repented. Esau sought after it with tears but God had mercy. And the bitter tears of Esau came to an end. Somebody under the sound of my voice. That bitter tears must surely come to an end in your life. By the time Jacob came, Esau told Jacob, Keep all your goods. Keep all your offerings. Keep all your blessings. After I sought after God, I now gave offering and the Lord accepted he has blessed me also. Don't give offering to me. Give offering to God. I am not going to take your life anymore. I'm not seeking after your life. I have gone and sought after God. And now after that, I gave my offering. And he accepted. Somebody, the offering that you're bringing today, may the Lord accept from you. I don't know what your offering is. But the offering of Jacob was accepted. And later after Esau did the correcting, his offering was accepted. The offering of prayers was accepted by Cain in Genesis chapter 4. And after that, God put a mark, a new covenant he made with Cain. And Cain built a city. And thank God because God gave Cain wisdom to tie down prosperity. God gave Cain wisdom to tie down wealth. God gave Cain wisdom to tie down prosperity. He built a city. His end was sweeter than his beginning. I prophesy to somebody, your end will be sweeter than your beginning in the name of Jesus Christ. I say your end will be, will be sweeter than your beginning in the name of Jesus Christ. Your end, likaye dalikatalio, o zambra kantalio, o pare endrali kantali mosikaba, o ragabababa, e brake telimosikaba, i jake telimoso, o talie kalibrate, o talie karibate, o talie karibate, Put in prayer, put in prayer, prayer, put in prayer, 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 and delicatoso. O ragaba e dralicatelli, e zage delibaco zicatali. O ragabababa, delia dalicato zato. O dalia gababa, recali brantali mosicaba. O rabababa, le gayendali, le bacatoso. O zake telimosicaba, endalica, ibra le mantalio. For those who need Bible reference, because I know. Some want to go and see it by themselves so that they are blessed. If you read Genesis chapter 4 verse 15 and verse 17. Genesis chapter 4 verse 15 and verse 17. So in Genesis chapter 4 verse 15, Cain went back to God and did the right thing. And made the proper offering. And the offering was accepted. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slay Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Because the era of kill, kill, kill was over in the life of Cain. It was now the era of heal, heal, heal. And this was how God started to heal him. And even said nobody should come close. Verse 17 of, of Genesis chapter 4. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, that was the name he called his son Enoch, and bear Enoch, and he built a city. God gave him wisdom to tie down prosperity. God gave him wisdom to tie down wealth. God gave him wisdom to tie down prosperity. He built a city. So when God gives you, when your millions start to roll, start to learn to build a city. Get properties. Get tie money into things that will appreciate. Stop buying chewing gum. Stop buying clothes. Stop buying the latest shoe. Stop buying the latest 
says uh, this buy the, the few clothes you need to wear that's not how to tie down prosperity stop buying stop wasting the latest fashion i am now wearing see the one they will do like a pass mark the other one they will do like a bull style they will put all this one they are just using to collect that money because immediately you walk out of that shop and you come back again that same thing has lost value why do you invest into such things go and buy gold go and buy metals go and buy land go and buy bill and estate buy things Tie down wealth for God's sake and stop. Hey, no, I'm being generous. I'm giving heaven and earth. You have to split that money into percentages. There's a percentage that should go into wealth and everything. It's a percentage that belongs to God. There's a percentage that you used to use to create wealth. You have to get to a level whereby your money starts to work for you. What Cain did here, he tied down money and money started to work for him because when you build a city, the city starts to produce, lay eggs of money for you. I speak to those who are mature, whom God has sent me to, I speak as an apostle. It's good to write books, but there are some times you write books, if you write books before your time, it might not be a good investment to you. There are people who write books at the right time and that book will become a source of, a, a kind of investment that will work for you. Find out the way God wants you to do what to create wealth or to tie down wealth around you. It's not the same with everybody. This one built a city. That was not the case with, with Jacob. Jacob was shown by God Almighty an image to place before the livestock. The wealth of Jacob came from the livestock. That was how God gave Jacob wealth from livestock. The wealth of Israel came by what? what? By borrowing. By borrowing. He said, let every man borrow from his neighbor. You have to find out how God wants to create wealth for you. Hallelujah. You must find out. The way God created wealth for the harlot Rahab, it was the regard and fear she had for God. It was through vow. He made a vow with the spies that were sent. And that's it. How building was the only one that was preserved. Find out how God wants to create wealth and how you need to sustain that wealth for yourself. Hallelujah. Some people, when Peter caught that, that, um, that fish with the boat sinking, some people would have thought of it as being wealth creation. He left it because that was not the way God wanted to create wealth for him. What was Peter's case? Jesus was the one who said in Matthew chapter 16 from verse 17, 18 and 19, Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. It manifested in Acts chapter 4 when he saw that in one night, 3,000 were added. That was the beginning of the wealth God wanted to create through Peter. Find out how God wants to create wealth in your life. Follow that pattern and ask him for wisdom to sustain that wealth. It might not be the same. Two people can come out from the same wood. It's not going to work the same way. The way it worked for Jacob is not the way it worked for Esau. But both of them were wealthy at the end of the day. Holy Spirit says, stop there. Yesterday, the network did not allow us to drink the water. God punish the devil, punish, punish, punish. Today, the Lord has sustained the network in Jesus' name. <laughs> God punish the devil, punish, punish, punish. Somebody, the Lord wants to create wealth for you. Join me if you do not mind. Before we lead people to Christ, join me. We want to plead the blood of Jesus Christ nine times. We want to say, Holy Spirit, take control, take over nine times. I want to say, in the name of Jesus Christ, nine times. And we will drink. And I know that as we drink in Jesus' name, we drink to prosperity. We drink to new health. We drink to testimonies. We drink to 24-hour miracle for those who confess it. We drink to another level. We drink to see you at the top because I know we will see each other at the top. There is no place for you on the ground level in the name of Jesus Christ. The God who remembered all the people we have seen in the scripture remember you too in a unique way. The spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead, Romans chapter 8 verse 11. That spirit enter into somebody as we drink this water right now and lift you to the top. As that spirit lifted up Jesus Christ, he lifted you to the top. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 said there's no other name given under heaven that any man be saved. That name has been lifted up. That name has been lifted up. In Mark chapter 16 verse 17, he said, but in my name you cast out demon. In my name you do several. He said, if you eat any deadly thing, it will not hurt you. That same name in Philippians chapter 2 verse 10. Philippians 2 chapter 10. He said, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. That name is a gateway. Now in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody join us. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Nine times. Plead the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. 
Whenever it may be somebody join me, say, Holy Spirit, take control, take over. We are going to do it nine times. Holy Spirit, take control, take over. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you may be, man of God, woman of God, please join me as we drink together if it's not against your faith. Join me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you like to give your life to Jesus Christ and you're under the sound of my voice, stretch forth your hand towards me, say with me, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I confess any sin and every sin that I've committed knowingly and unknowingly, every vow that I've entered into because you're not interested in the vows of fools. Every wrong offering that I lifted up like Cain, oh Lord, in error. Daddy, I ask for mercy. I ask for grace. I ask, oh God, forgive me through the power of the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Cleanse me from every unrighteousness. Say with me, cleanse me, oh God, and grant me the grace to live righteously and live holy by your word. Say, every covenant that I have entered into consciously and unconsciously, I denounce them. Cancel them for me through the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Say, I believe in my heart Jesus died for me. He was buried for my sake and for my sake he was lifted from the grave. Say, I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth so I find salvation. Wherever you may be, man of God, join me. Say, I'm born again. Please join me. Say, I am born again. Man of God, woman of God, join me. Say, I am born again and it is binding in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, if you like to, in Jesus' name, Praise God, praise God. <coughs> if you would like to, in any form, in any way, if you would like to, dedicate your life to Jesus Christ. Wherever you may be, in Jesus' name, join me right now. Say with me, say, I dedicate. Say, I dedicate. Man of God, woman of God, join me. Say, I dedicate my life unto you, Alpha, Omega, and it is binding in Jesus' name. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus Christ, please let us pray. Eternal Rock of Ages, Alpha and Omega. Eternal Rock of Ages, Alpha and Omega, beginning at the end, Daddy, I give you praise. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I adore you. Lord, I say there is none like unto you. Be thou exalted, be thou glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ma shanta kaba libro. Mosa ketele mosu kaba. O raga dali ketali. Ikrele man tali bro zikaiba. O raga bababa. Ancient of this Alpha and Omega. Ma libra italioska. Gebali Catali Mosu Kayaba, Un Drelike Teli Bantalius, Un Delike Teli Bantali Mosikayaba, O Raga Bababa, Ligra la Gaia Dali Mosikaba, Ligra la Daya Gadali Mosikaba, Ligra la Daya Gadali Mosikaba Tali, O Raga Bandali Ebrantos, O Sake Teli Mosikaba, E Shantalio, O Gaga Gaga Gaga, Daddy saved lives, O God, on this mountain, Daddy turned lives, O God, Jehovah, from zero to hero. Daddy, turn life from zero to hero. You, O oh Lord, who remembered Maliga Dalaba, Zege Deba Katoso, O Calabrantali Mosikaba, Eze Calibrantalios, O Ragababa, you who turned the life, O oh God, of, of Mephibosheth from zero to hero. You, O oh Lord, who turned the life of Cain around. O oh Lord, come, O oh Lord, come mightily and turn the lives of people around on this holy mountain in a way that everyone will know that they have met with you, in a way that everyone will know that it can only be God. In the name of Jesus, can wipe away tears, O Lord, on this holy mountain, wipe away tears. In the name of Jesus, wipe away tears on this holy mountain, Jehovah, wipe away tears. In the name of Jesus, everyone putting in prayer, putting in prayer, prayer. Anyone, everyone, putting in prayer, prayer, prayer. Malikayadala, bosake etalie, marangadalimo, opralimo sikaba. The testimonies that you have given unto your church, O God, let that testimony remain. In the name of Jesus Christ, power to, to not only create wealth or to receive wealth, but to sustain it, O Lord, grant unto your church. In the name of Jesus Christ, and everyone that you're taking to the top, Lord, let, oh God, the power of the blood of Jesus sustain your church at the top because that's where you have intended for us in the name of Jesus Christ. At the king's table, daddy, we start to eat on the king's table. Daddy, affliction is over in the life of as many that are afflicted, not by mind or by power, but by the spirit that is 
present here. You made us to know that that grace is available, that strength is available. Psalm chapter 18 verse 32, you said you guarded us with strength. That strength, that is supply. In Isaiah 45 verse 5, you said you are you are the, you have guarded us, O Lord, even when we do not know you. So there are people here, O God, that is still supply strength. Then in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9, you said your grace is sufficient for us because even in our weakness, your strength is made perfect. O Lord God Almighty, who is that person here that you have changed their level to first Peter chapter 2, verse 5. You've changed their level to first Peter 2, verse 9. You've changed their level to first Peter chapter 5, verse 10. Oh Lord, turn things around to the glory and honor of your name. You, oh Lord, who change the level of Cain in Genesis chapter 4, verse 17, verse 17, and verse 19. You, oh Lord, who change the level, oh God, of Cain, verse 15 and verse 17. Verse 15 and verse 17, Genesis chapter 4. You change the level of Cain and you help him sustain wealth. Oh Lord, change the level of anyone, everyone that is due for promotion. And according to Psalm 91, verse 16, Daddy, with long life, satisfy your church and show your salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that is not in line with your will, fall off from your church, fall off. Everything that is not in line with your will, oh Lord, for us, fall down and die by fire, by force in Jesus' name. Sustain your church, oh God, sustain your church. Sustain your church, oh God, they are going out, they are coming in sustained. Thank you, oh God, for the miracle that you're creating, oh God, for us, that you're doing in our midst. Thank you, oh God, because somebody that came here looking at them themselves as a dead dog. Jehovah, you have revived that person not just to a dog but a living lion. Daddy, the dead dog has just become a living lion in the name of Jesus Christ. Not by might, not by power. The dead dog has just become a living lion that will be served by not less than 36 people. That will be served by their former affliction. Father, because harvest has commenced in the life of your people. Harvest has commenced. I prophesy harvest in anything and everything you have finally to do. Have Harvest untold, harvest unbelievable, harvest unbounded in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be, so shall it be, so shall it be. I prophesy your mercy upon everyone that is putting in prayer, prayer, prayer. Oh Lord, I prophesy your mercy and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ upon every prayer mandate, upon every mother, upon every father, upon every boy, every girl, upon any widow, every single parent, upon anyone struggling like Mephibosheth was struggling with his son Micah even before you remember that anyone in that category, any student, anyone in that category, oh Lord, turn things around in the name of Jesus. I pray, Malatario Zikaba, for anyone in the hospital, prison, home, Lord, make a way in Jesus' name. Thank you for every life that is here. Thank you for every man of God. Thank you for your word. Thank you for men of God serving, oh God, whether missionary level or at the pulpit. Daddy, thank you for men of God that are in business. Thank you for men of God that are in career work. I cover every man. I cover the church of God. I cover everyone calling upon your name in spirit and in truth. Father, even if they are not Christians, Daddy, there are people calling upon you that you have revealed yourself to. Daddy, answer their prayer. Daddy, respond to the fasting and prayer of your people in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for people who are celebrating their best day today and this week father several more years they will celebrate in the land of the living in the name of jesus christ thank you blessed redeemer thank you thank you alpha and omega thank you for those who have received their miracle thank you for those who came sad but your word has put joy in their heart they are living excited sustain this joy and peace oh god in the heart of your people i declare as your as your handmaiden and your servant in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the apostle benediction upon you in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. I release the apostle benediction upon you as I'm commanded. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you, upon your house, upon whatsoever I am finding to do, upon whosoever is connected to you by blood. May the Alpha, Alpha, Omega, Omega, beginning and the end grant you peace. The Lord grant you peace. The Lord grant you peace now and forevermore. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. So shall it be. In the name. Jesus Christ, hallelujah, praise God. Shalom, shalom, shalom to everyone that is praying with the apostle. God bless you. One more time, apologies for yesterday. Somehow the network um, the network dropped and the 
the broadcast got truncated. But thank God that the Lord sustained the network for us today. And thank God because there might be some other set of people God wanted to receive healing and blessing. God bless you. God honor you. I want to thank God for everyone putting in prayer, putting in prayer, prayer. Everyone God have used to sustain, you know, this broadcast thus far, winning a soul. All of you that God is using to make one or two donations. And we thank God for the charity that is associated to this holy mountain, reaching out to the less privileged, reaching out to the widows reaching out to children, motherless, fatherless, children, people in need. We thank God for the grace of God that has helped us the little way we can. With the little that God is bringing, we are making sure that it is properly accounted for. And please, you can follow the link that will be dropped into this into this house, whether now or later. Or you can follow the link at the top of the page and see if God is leading you in that direction. If it's not working for you, let us know and we can work out something. Praise God. Also, I want to thank God for those that God is using to save a soul, even to, even one more soul. So as you are sharing the broadcast and those who are capturing everything that is being said during the service, God honor you. God bless you. God lift you up. God lift you up. God bless you. Please, if you are watching us from the YouTube, we need you to subscribe right now. So please press that subscription button. Okay, press that subscription button. And also, please, if you can, just make sure you press that red bell on the YouTube. God bless you. God honor you. God bless you. If you don't have a channel, that's okay. You can watch what we're doing on the YouTube. Just type on Bounded House into the search engine and search for it. Now, some people told me that they cannot find the page that we are having the broadcast. Please take this, take this uh, announcement very serious. Whenever you are searching for the page where the broadcast is taking place and you cannot find it, all you need to do, the shortcut, is go to the search engine and type at, okay, you know the sign of at, type at J-U-M-B-O-I-S-O-N-G. Search and the page, you will see it to come out. Just click on it and it will bring you straight to the page. So sometimes maybe you need to update your app or, or something has happened and you cannot easily locate the page. Just type at J-U-M-B-O-I-S-O-N-G into the search engine. Search for it and it will come out. But remember, if you like and follow the page, except something on likes, if, if you press on like or you press, you press on follow, you might search for the page and not find it. But once you need it, just put at J-U-M-B-O-I-S-O-N-G, one word. It will pull out the page for you. But the easiest way, again, is like and follow the page. As you like and follow the page, it will appear under your page. If you go to your Facebook where things are itemized, you see groups, you see page, you see other things. If you click on page, this will come out there if you like and follow the page. It will come out for you. God bless you, okay? And that's, that's how to easily join the broadcast okay the next broadcast will be on sunday and i know that god will sustain you and me until sunday it's going to be a powerful sunday today is a combined service and that's why we're we're using the water on a special friday we do it and that's because the broadcast the network crashed um yesterday and i did apologize to everyone god bless you god honor you god lift you up god continue to honor you if you have a question if you have a question you need counseling or you need interpretation to a dream by the holy ghost you can use send a message on the page send us a message use the facebook messenger send us a message or send a whatsapp message using the number on the page and the number on my profile wall my profile wall is jumbo isong in bracket uyata these are the only official page that i have okay these are the only official page so make use of that and send us your message or your question and the link that will be put into the house if you would like to be part of what god is doing with the charity and also to sustain this mountain then you can use the link if it's not working for you please drop a message for us and the lord who sees will honor you Every offering that you're bringing to the Lord, every tithe you're bringing to the Lord is properly accounted for at any point in time. You can always speak to the apostle if you want to have an idea of what is going on on the mountain. God honor you, God bless you. I wanted to be publishing it during broadcast like this and some people are like, no apostle, no. Let's just focus on the service and continue. Those who need to, they will ask you and once you ask, you will give you a good accountability by the grace of God. God honor you, God bless you, God lift you up. In Jesus' name. My name is Apostle Jumbo Isong. Please permit me to sign out my usual way. God punish the devil. Punish, punish, punish the Lord. Rebuke the devil. Rebuke, rebuke, rebuke in Jesus' name. 
the Lord is lifting you up and there's nothing any power of darkness can do concerning that. I need to appreciate these men and women of God very quickly. Gloria Ifoma A is in the house. Hallelujah. Gloria Ifoma, God bless you. Nice to see you in the house. Always a delight to see you. Darling MD is in the house. God bless you, darling MD. Nice to see you. Engineer Boba Cinema is in the house. Hallelujah. It's nice to see you. Marsha Wilson, I see that. God bless you too. God bless you. Marsha Wilson is in the house. KDR to S is in the house. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Mami Salo. Mami Salo. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Prince Sopru Obi. God bless you, man of God. Prince Sopru Obi, you've been of a great help. God who seen the secret openly reward you so greatly. Prince Miracle Chibweze, God honor you. God lift you up. God honor you. God bless you. Prince Chibweze, God bless you. Prince Miracle Chibweze, God bless you. God bless you, Joyce. God bless you, Joyce Dawn. God bless you. God bless you, Caleb O. Caleb O. God honor you. God lift you up, Caleb O. God bless you, Orlando. Orlando is in the house. Nice to see you, man of God. God bless you. Samuel, God bless you. S. Samuel, God bless you. God bless you, S. Samuel. Joshua S. God bless you. Joshua S. is in the house. God bless you. E. E. Friday also is in the house. God bless you, E. E. Friday. Vivian Sopru Obi. God bless you, Vivian. And so will be. Thank you for all your help. Faith, oh God bless you. Faith, God bless you. Faith, oh God bless you. Barbara T is in the house. Hey, it's nice to see you, Barbara T. God honor you, Barbara. God bless you. And Stephen is in the house. God bless you, Stephen. God bless you. God bless you. Tom Robots R is in the house. Tom Robots, God bless you. Tom Robots, God bless you. S, God bless you. S, Raymond, God bless you. S, Raymond, Raymond is in the house. S, Raymond, God bless you. God honor you. God bless you. S. Raymond, God bless you. God bless you, bless you, bless you, God bless you. Christiana D.O., God bless you and your testimony. I pray more testimony God will grant unto you, Christiana D.O. God bless you, God honor you, God bless you. God bless you, L. Johnson. God bless you, L. Johnson. Patricia D., God bless you. Sawana M., God bless you, God bless you. Wema M., God bless you, God bless you. M. Harrison, God bless you, God bless you. Gift, God bless you. Gift T. D. A., God bless you. Gift, God God bless you. God bless you. God bless anyone, everyone in the house. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Margaret KB, God bless you. God bless you. Joe Botswana. It was nice to see you. Joe Botswana, God bless you. Bless you. Joe Botswana. God honor you. God lift you up. Margaret KB, God bless you. God lift you up. God bless you. God bless you. Mrs. Akonji, God bless you. Julia A, it was nice to see you. Julia A in the house. God bless you. Julia A, it was nice to see you. God bless you. Jocelyn H. God bless you, Christiana D. O. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Don L. God bless you. God bless you. Jeannie P. God bless you. Jeannie P. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Gozi O. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Naomi M. is in the house. Was nice to see you, Naomi. God bless you. Elizabeth N. God bless you and God bless your God bless your husband. God bless his new his new age and God bless you more. And God give you more wedding, you know, wedding anniversary joys. So happy wedding anniversary to you, Elizabeth N. God bless you. God bless you, Gordon R. God bless you, Gordon B. God bless you, Gordon. God bless you, God bless you. God bless you, God in B. Angelica M. God bless you, Angelica. God bless you, Georgia Anavas. God bless you. God bless you, A. Rodney. God bless you. God bless you, A. Rodney. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Mark James. The list goes on and on. God bless you. God bless you. Florence O. Oh, God bless you. I leave you all in the hands of the Holy Spirit. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Baruch Hashem Adonai, meaning blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. God bless you. God honor you. God lift you up. Bye-bye.